This is so good. <laughs> and then Dr. Pepper said it's February. Not the best thing. Now, what we've got is each person will get this certificate on Thursday. Yeah, All right, guys, y'all ready? Sure, yeah. sir. Yes, sir, you'll be recording, Mr. Chairman. All right. Um, like everybody's here. Item number one is to approve the agenda. Anybody got any issues? Anything? Okay, good deal. Item number two, the consent agenda. Approve the minutes of the last meeting. Approve staff development the district planning committee. Mr. Kurtz? Yes, sir. You got any ideas on the district planning committee? No, this is a recommendation from Dr. Milton. And uh, most of these have been on this committee before, either serve your first or second year. And uh, I think all of those are very good uh, individuals from each school. Um, and then, of course, central office is involved in that. And all of this is, is for the in service that uh, Dr. Milton is uh, in charge of. And these are the ones that principals have nominated. Some are serving their first year, some are serving their second year. And actually, we kept the list from last year since we didn't really get to do much planning. So the only ones that we uh, changed were the ones we had a couple of retirees that would have remained on the list. So we got the principals or the supervisor's recommendations. The reason there are no principals on there is because that's the group that we look at. And then we take it to the principals. Um, at our next district leadership meeting, so. If you approve the list, we have our next check-in meeting to sort of look at what the um, schedule will be next Wednesday at 3.15. Teachers only have two self-selected in-service days in the next year calendar and three are built in where we do our PLC work and professional development. I'll be talking to you later when we have time about um, the grants that we've received about the literacy um, reading 360 that the State Department is rolling out. But I know you had a long um, agenda this evening so and Thursday, so we'll wait till a little later to go over those things. Okay. Any questions, Dr. Milton? I see. Um, we actually have some bus trips, Mr. Perry. We do have some bus trips. Imagine that. Uh, <laughs> we're starting to get back to some normalcy here, and I've approved eighth grade trips. And, you know, other, other than we've got one or two that's going to Lake Winnipesaukee, and that's right on the border. So normally mm -hmm. don't bring those before the border because it's right there at, they're not at right there. You pull in, you're, you know, they're right there on Tennessee Georgia Line. Uh, I've got a couple others going to, uh, on eighth grade trips, going to uh, Dollywood that we allow on the eighth grade trips. And then we have, these are high school trips. Uh, trip number 32, 3972 is high school going to the National Medicare Convention. Uh, that will be taking place in Orlando, Florida this year. Uh, the uh, next one you see, 3973 is West Side going to the National Medicare Convention. Are any of these schools running together? Or are they already? They are. They okay. are. Some of them are getting together and and um, and and joining to get joining forces, as they say. Uh, Thirty nine seventy five is probably the one that's not a baby club. It is uh, submitted by Wesley Foster with the Tennessee FFA convention. Normally, when Mr. Fan and I were in FFA, it was in Gatlinburg in April. Derek, did you go? At, I did. On FFA, so it was in Gatlinburg for the last many, many years, and uh, they they moved it to June now. So uh, just to, to get it in, I think after COVID, they decided to do it in June. So that's a that's a that's a change. It's still going to be in Gatlinburg, but it's going to be in June. Mm -hmm. And then 3976 is also the Junior Beta Club going to uh, Junior Beta Club from Auburn going. And then 3978 is Short Mountain that's going to the National Beta Club Convention. So you've got probably the first trips that you will 
Well, Aubrey Town says it doesn't need a bus, it just needs permission. <laughs> right, and I think some of them are flying, and then some of them are, are driving on charter buses. Mm -hmm. yeah, short Mountains flying southwest. Um, so they're coming from all over the country going to, going to Orlando. So we're fortunate we have some national candidates that are running. Mm -hmm. So that will be exciting for those individuals and especially the junior betas that are running for office. They're all familiar with where they're going, the protocols yeah. and stuff that they're going to have. Yes, sir. And they've got some national yeah. protocols too yeah. on, on top of, on top of that. On top of that. Too. that. All right. Anybody ask any questions? Sure. Okay. All right, the safety report. Uh, Miss Bonnie is doing grandmother duty tonight, so I have the safety report. And you have a copy of the safety report in your packet. School security assessments have been conducted to all schools except East Side, which will be done this week. Yeah. And then written recommendations will be given to all principals and members of the district safety team to determine the expenditures for the 21 22 safety grant. Released later in July, and Derek, I'm going to talk with her about uh, what we discussed earlier about the meeting over at the uh, baseball field being utilized as part of that safety grant um, to getting a better net up there. And they're going to be doing some work on the field anyway, uh, moving some old fencing over and kind of reconfigurating that. So when we do, what we look and see what cost of netting would be there. And Milton C. Electric has been fantastic, and DTC both have been very, very good partners with us in hanging those nets. So I think that'll be best for everybody, all, all involved. So we may use some of that safety money to do that. Uh, Tennessee Together survey is available. You have a you have a spiral bound booklet that you have there at your uh, positions. And as you see that, you can see the um, booklet that's there's a lot of great information in this booklet lots of good information in this booklet so uh tremendous amount of stuff that's there uh, there's some fascinating things in there take your time to look at this this is this this is a survey that was done with, with in regard to kids students and so and this is all county county information and then you can see the the, the Bonnie can give you the more details about this, uh, but it's, it is some interesting, very, very interesting survey information. So, it's all County County. All County County. You got Tennessee to give a survey. If you look at the, look at that, you can see uh, just you pick out you pick out one in regard to the County County, all County County data. So if you look on page seven, you can see all County County data. There, it talks about the unweighted and weighted sample of how many students, um, how many samples that they got from these schools. And uh, mainly this was done seven eighth grade kids, seven eighth grade in high school. So it's some good information there. And I, I have not read the entire thing that I've looked through on some on particular uh, things. And it's just it's some fascinating stuff. If I'm still teaching sociology, it'd be a great, uh, it'd be great, it'd be a great tool. Okay, and um, that's like I say, excellent information there. Uh, the other thing on that is the uh, radios. Right now, we are probably eighty percent of the radios have been installed on our uh, buses, and they've all been installed and checked in all in each and every school in Cannon County. So, uh, Mr. Roy Sullivan, uh, EMA director and E nine one one director has been uh, very, very helpful in this project. You've heard me talk about it a lot. And uh, this is one of those projects that I wish was done yesterday. Um, and so communication is vital, in, particularly in places where cell service does not work. And so I'm, I'm very, very uh, pleased in regarding the installation of radios. In fact, we're probably going to be going back and doing some other adjustments after after this first round, we're going to be finding the dead spots. We're also looking at our, our schools and see if we've got simplex communication between our schools in case phones go down and our uh, and our 
internet, our VOIP phones go down, that we'll still have a communication with everybody within our school district as part of our emergency procedures. So that to me is is the good is the good news of everything. In case we did have to call school early or call school off in the middle of, a, of buses being out there, we can now have communication with all of our drivers. Tower, 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 sir. The tower. Yeah, all of those are on the, the emergency communication district towers, and uh, all of those are emergency backup powers, so repeaters should not go out. But in the likelihood that we had a massive problem and and that would go out, we could still have communication not utilizing our repeaters. And we would have simplex communication with all of our schools from central office once our new antennas are up and we're going to be working on that to make sure that's it right and done right. Uh, that's probably the second way. This is the first part and then we'll come back with a second part to I want simplex communications. But Roy has, done, has worked hand in hand with us. And so you see Mr. Sullivan, uh, thank you for his cooperation and help because we cut the cost in half. That first bid we received like it was 80 grand. And this has cost us, you know, in the upper 30s. So, you know, Roy's been and Roy kicked in some money too from the communication district to complete this. So uh, please thank Mr. Sullivan. Next time you see him. So no county funds were expended in this budget. Okay. Any any questions anymore about the safety report for Miss Bonnie? If you do, please send Miss Bonnie an email or if you have any other questions, or and I'll give that to her. And she thanks you for letting her be a grandma tonight. <laughs> All right, item number four is a possible action lawsuit for Jewel Labs. I have somebody here. All right, we do have Mr. Chairman. We have Mr. William uh, Shanoff. I hope I got that right. Yeah, uh, William, uh, so we welcome him to us. Uh, this is part of the class action lawsuit that, uh, against Jewel Labs. Uh, many, many school systems in Tennessee have signed on to this. I received communication back on March the 10th from Mr. Chris McCarty. He's a, number, he's a school attorney from many, many school districts in Tennessee. He's part of the Lewis Thompson group with Chuck Cagle. And, uh, and great friend, by the way, Mr. McCarty and I have discussed some issues with him and, and your own board attorney, Mr. Michael Jean. So. Uh, what they're telling you is, is good information, uh, but I'll, I'll let him take it from here in regard to uh, the uh, the Jewel Labs lawsuit. So, Mr. Trump, welcome. By the way, where are you from? San Diego. Okay. <laughs> and travel all the way from San Diego to yeah. Cannon yeah. Cannon. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you all very much for the time tonight. Um, my name is William Chanoff. I'm an attorney with the France Law Group out of our San Diego, California office. And so, what's going on in this case? I, we started this case about 18 months ago. I myself, prior to joining the firm I'm at now, I'm a former education law attorney. I represented a majority of the school districts in Southern California. And the issue of vaping was a problem throughout my clients. And it was becoming a huge financial burden on all my clients. And so when I came to this other firm uh, who specializes in representing public entities on the plaintiff side, I thought this was a great opportunity to really delve into how, how this issue has become so large and also see if we had the opportunity to be able to provide schools the resources they desperately needed to deal with this and not use taxpayer funds to deal with it and use these corporations funds to be able to appropriately deal with this issue in the future. And so this case has been going on. I now represent over 275 school districts throughout the country. Uh, at this point, we're around 28 school systems in Tennessee, uh, but a number are going to be joining throughout this summer because uh, we're just at the beginning stages of it joining. This is uh, a type of class action, but it's not a class action. And that's important because uh, each school system that will join this case will have their own lawsuit, uh, their own complaint on file. So at the end of the day, whatever happens in this case, you're not going to get a gift certificate in the mail. <laughs> you're actually going to get the really what the real resources we need because you're going to have a seat at the table in this case. And so what happens in the court systems when there is a case this large and they don't want this to take the next 30 years across the country, they consolidate it into one courtroom. This case is consolidated into the federal courtroom in San Francisco. And so we've been litigating it. We have a trial now set for uh, March, 2022. Uh, so it's upcoming. They've, they've really expedited this case because the judge has taken this issue very seriously. The two main defendants in this case is Jewel Labs, which many of you probably see in your gas stations and grocery stores, 
uh, they own about 85% of the market. This company started off as a doctoral program for two gentlemen out of Stanford and within six years became a $32 billion company. And through that time, their main consumer has been children. The other main defendant in this case is Altria, which many of you may know is Philip Morris or Marlboro. And so they're a major owner of Jewel and they're the, the marketing backbone of really of the, this company. And through this case, what we thought was going on has been true. When we look back 50, 60 years on tobacco, the whole concept of their business is we addict a young person, we create a customer for life. That's what we're, we're dealing with again here. You addict a child to Juul, you're going to have a customer for life now because now they're addicted to nicotine. And so the purpose of this case is that when they went and marketed their products, they failed to advise about the harms of their products. Now they've changed their boxes. They have warnings everywhere. But what they didn't advise was the fact that they, that they had nicotine, number one, even in the product. And there's an extreme amount of nicotine. So in one of these jewel pods is, is the equivalent of two, is two packets of cigarettes. And so what they also invented was the ability for someone to consume the product extremely quickly. For someone to smoke two packs of cigarettes, it could take some time. Also, the, the effects on your body is pretty extreme if you try to smoke two packs of cigarettes in one sitting. But with the Jewel Pod, they created these salts that you literally could suck one of these Jewel Pods down in 30 minutes, and you've now taken the equivalent of two packs of cigarettes. And so with that extreme nicotine content that you're seeing with it, we now have kids that are addicted to nicotine. And a majority of them have no clue that that's what their issue that they're dealing with. And so with, with all that, we're bringing these cases. And so as a public entity, there's law called public nuisance law, which allows a public entity like yourself to go and hold companies accountable for the harm to the community that they've created. And through that, that law, we're allowed to request resources to deal with the harm they've, they've created. And so what we're doing in this case is we look backwards to see what harm your, your system has already suffered financially, but also we look at what, what do you need at the end of the day to be able to deal with this issue appropriately. So when we look backwards, we look at, you know, some school systems have already installed vape detectors, which is important. Uh, some school systems have put on educational programs that they've had to pay money for on regarding vaping. One thing that I can tell every school system has dealt with is time dealing with vaping related discipline, because it's an issue across the board. You talk to your principals and your high schools, middle schools, they'll tell you a lot of time is spent dealing with that. When I came into town, I saw a huge sign for promoting vaping on one of the markets. Uh, so everyone's very well aware of it. Uh, and so, but then we go and we look forward. And so we have a panel of experts that were also involved in the tobacco litigation. And I asked them, if I gave you a blank check, what would, what would these schools need to be able to deal with this issue in the future? Tennessee, you're <coughs> top. you got the great privilege of being a top 10 in the country for underage vaping. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a big issue. And so what they've told me is we need to focus on deterrence, support, and education. So deterrence, we deter kids vaping on campus by putting in the vape detectors. The schools that have been able to do it, they've seen a dramatic drop because kids now know, hey, I can't go to the bathroom and start vaping. I can't be in the classroom vaping because I'm going to be caught. Uh, they created a product that was meant that you can do it without being caught. But with these vape detectors, it helps. The problem most school systems have not done it is because it costs between $3,000 and $5,000 a detector. So even if you're a small school system, that's a lot of money to put it into all your classrooms and all your bathrooms. So that our, our goal in this case is to be able to provide you the money to be able to do that. Another thing we're looking at is funding for, to be able to hire additional staff for supervision purposes, because when kids know that there's more staff out there looking out for this, they will hopefully stop doing that as well. What we, based on how high the numbers are though, what our experts have told us is that we need to provide funding for schools for the next five to 10 years, because that's how long it's gonna take to truly bring down the numbers based on how high they are. And so all of our funding is based on a five to 10 year model. We're also looking at to be able to give money to, to be able to provide resources, the money uh, to hire additional school counselors that have the background in nicotine addiction. So we can be able to provide support to kids for that nicotine addiction issue. And then finally, and I think what's the most important is funding for education. Uh, this is gonna be key for high school, middle school, and 
unfortunately, elementary school too, because they're going to see this in middle school and high school in educational programs regarding the harms of aging, because what parents and students know about this product and what the truth is, there's a huge gap now. And as we've seen with programs like DARE, uh, you know, education is key to be able to provide kids who are doing it the truth and be able, be able to start making the right decisions. And for kids that will be confronted with this to have the, the education now about why not to do this. So that's the monetary aspect of this case of what we're looking to provide for our districts in this case. And again, because you, we, we then work with our, our district clients and we determine, okay, if based on all these different issues, what is that number? And when there is a time for where hopefully this case is getting resolved end of this year, next year, that we're appropriately and prepared to be able to figure out what that number is for your school system at the end of the day. But also, this case isn't only about money, it's also about creating change. And so what we do in these types of cases is we're asking for injunctive relief. So that's a court order asking for them, for the court to prohibit conduct by these defendants. This is what happened in the tobacco litigation. And so what we're asking the court is to stop them from marketing the children. They, they have to be able to, there is no regulations right now on them. And so we need to be able to make sure that there is an order in place that prohibits this kind of conduct. Uh, and that, that is what happened in tobacco litigation. They were prohibited from marketing to children. Uh, they, would have, they had to stop using the Joe Camel. They had to stop, do, and so that's what they're doing in this. They're using everything that's very enticing to kids, and, that, and that's part of our case too, is stopping it. So this is about also, through this type of action, protecting the kids in the community. And so that's, that's what the goal of this case is, and I wanted to, to kind of sum it up. I wanted to tell you the two main questions I always get on boards regarding this case. Uh, the first one is time consumption of the staff to be involved in this case. So this is not like regular litigation where there's going to be uh, depositions and massive document production. All that's required of a school system to be involved is responding to a court ordered questionnaire. Uh, it's about 35 questions and it'll probably take your staff, you know, two to three hours to complete. That's the only staff involvement to be involved in this case. So, so the time constraints are really not a, a big issue. The other questions regarding costs uh, to be involved in this case. We don't work on this case on an hourly basis. We work on what's called a contingency fee. So that means that if there is no financial recovery in this case, uh, we, don't, we don't get paid. We are responsible for all the costs. Um, but if there is a financial recovery, our fees are paid by a percentage of the recovery. Normally that would be 40% for plaintiff litigation, but what we've done is we've cut our fee. So it's 20% if the case resolves within the first six months. And then if it takes longer than six months, it increases to 25%, but it doesn't exceed 25%. Um, I'm partnered with Lewis Thomason out of uh, Nashville and Knoxville. Uh, they're, they're our local counsel in this case, and their, their fee is also paid through that fee. Um, so end of the day, not a penny of general funds will ever be used in this case. It can only bring in money to the school system. It can't take anything out. And one, one final question I do get a lot is, if there is a recovery, uh, is that money now, are we obligated to use it for those specific things? Uh, is there like an accounting we end up having to do at the end of the day? No. You'll, what would happen is you'd be provided a settlement pool of money, and then it would be up to you as the board to decide how to use that. Hopefully it would all be for uh, vaping purposes, but that, that is up to you at the end of the day. Uh, so that being said, I wanted to provide you the opportunity to answer any questions that I can at this point. Did you say the law firm out of Nashville was Lewis Thomason? Yes. T-H-O-M-A-S-O-N? Yes. Correct. I've done over like 200 of these, so I kind of got it down now. Louis <laughs> Thomason is Premier School Law Firm in Tennessee. Chris <laughs> is there, Chris McCarty's there, very respected individuals that I trust. Mr. Jennings utilizes them um, certainly for consultation purposes. And one thing on Louis Thomason, um, you know, Chris McCarty says, you know, he's, he's right for it. and. What does the board need to do now, Mr. Schnapp, if you agree to be a part of this? So the next step would be the board to uh, vote to approve the contingency fee agreement. Uh, and after that,
after that, we move forward and we work with the staff on uh, them completing the questionnaire. And that would be it at that point. And of course, if there is a resolution at the end of the day in this case, it would all be, you know, we would work with, we would probably have a representative from your system that would be involved in those negotiations. At the end of the day, any resolution is, or settlement will be pending board approval. Okay, do you have a sample measure, I'm assuming that y'all have, that Chris can provide? Or? Yes, yes, okay. I'll submit it over to you tonight. Okay. And I noticed that you said if the case revolves, resolves in, the, in six months, mm -hmm. it would go to 25. This says in the first year. Which one's right? That one would be right. Okay. Yes, yeah, just that one. All right. All right. Mr. Jennings, do you want to look over all those documents for me? Mr. Jennings has looked over these documents and he approved this. County is signing on here. He represents his county attorney, Wilson County, signing on. So, appreciate that. One additional question. Did you travel all the way from San Diego just to talk to the board? And you got other presentations? There's a couple other. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yes, I did come down. Yes, yes, I did come down. You got about this to come and visit Kansas yeah, County. So exactly. So there you go. <laughs> well, I thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. So thank much. you. I appreciate it. I do have this email if you think of any questions. I have Mr. McCarty. All right. Item number five, Bill Parker, Chris Andrews, Coach McDaniel, the first Chris Lord regarding the football program. Hello, fellas. Hey, how are you guys? Thank you for your uh, time meeting with us. Um, yeah. We're here in regards to the Kennedy County Youth Football. Um, Coach Daniel, he uh, approached me as a guest about four months ago about taking this program over. Uh, and uh, I uh, we talked pretty lengthy uh, about it, and uh, I wanted to do this thing the the right way. I want to possibly put this into the school system um, for accountability purposes, uh, for not only for the coaches but the student athletes also for um, academic reasons. Um, I wanted to adopt the academic, you know, the uh, academics that the same the school system thing. Because um, at the end of the day, I look at it a lot like parenting. Um, if you can't start this when your child when they're 12, 13 years old, you got to start when they're young, you know. And um, I believe that you know sports can can do that. Um, and uh, I'd uh, take it. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you guys uh, would consider us as a part of part of County County School System. Goes in. Right. So. Will took this program over. He's done great things with it. What end event? What three weeks ago? Yep. Had over a hundred youth at that. Um, yeah, event. over hundred and ten. Just a three day year. event. Yep. It was amazing, right there on the football field. So that's very, very promising. Um, just having uh, organization mm -hmm. through us, middle school program, high school program, so that we can have can sustainability and continue this program. Obviously, people come and go. So when that happens, it kind of leaves a void and somebody just picks up the reins and takes it over. We're trying to adopt bylaws that keep this thing going. Hopefully Will's gonna be around a long time, but when Will decides to step back, somebody there's procedures for putting somebody else in place for that, not just, okay, who's gonna take it over and, and run that. Um, we felt like we could help each other out because the youth football program does use our facility on the football field. Um, they practice, our plan is for them to practice at the <coughs> ground slash uh, practice area right next to Woodbury Grammar School. Ms. Hancock has been gracious enough to let us use that, let us go ahead and use that facility this fall. Our plan as of right now is to have two ways for our players to get to practice. One is to go to ESP, and Ms. Black has, can get us transportation from ESP to Will and the coaches or parents can bring the players right down to practice. And th those coaches will be vetted through the same background checks that 
I go through, Coach Lance stuff goes through the same training or the same kind of training that is required for youth football, they'll have to go through as well. So there's some vetting there. It's not just showing up and we don't know who those people are. So we, we thought that would be a opportunity for us to do that. Um, Will's a former player slash community member of mine. So I, I just, we took this opportunity and it's been nothing but um, a lot of people reaching out and saying, hey, we want to help. He said a lot of people wanted to go to be coaches. And he's been straightforward with them. Hey, we're going to make sure that you get the background check. You're going to get the, the training. We've already had a coach's clinic two days up at the high school already, trying to get them to, uh, to, teach, to teach young men some fundamentals of football. Along with that, he mentioned it already, the great aspect. We're another accountability piece that teachers, that administrators can use Hey, I want to talk to your football coach about your grades. Mm -hmm. And that, that has an impact. And we want to be an impact because at the end of the day, we want to raise young men. And we have young women playing football now, too, um, who are excellent citizens in this county and represent Kenning County in the best possible way. Now, this will be uh, from K through yes, it'll be, um, six. Yeah, so it's... Uh, Five years old yeah. until 12 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have any six graders on yours, no, right? Okay. So what uh, what what we'll have, what they're going to offer is flag football for up to what age? Uh, so flag is five through seven. Okay. And then eight and nine is the first year of tackle. And then 10, 11, and 12 would be the senior league. Yeah, I really think this is really a good thing to get the uh, accountability there. Their finances are also going to go through the school system, which is huge. The parents can have confidence that their money is being handled appropriately, and they can go always go. You go get a printout of what they're spending on, on whatever. Definitely yeah. want that part to be an open book. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's very important. As a matter of fact, you've already started an account. Yes, it's it's already, high school. Yes, it is. So there's already separation there. Very similar to what our junior pro basketball program is going through with our through the through the through Joyce of High School and our county procedures there too. So well I, I appreciate you stepping up for yeah. the layer of accountability on financials. So if something's just kind of strange, Joyce asked me, oh yeah, Will's got that, we're good to go. Pulls the PO, everything's it's great the way it should be. Insurance, yes. Yeah, we're gonna be my next question. Took it out of my mouth. <coughs> Will they be covered by our insurance? Same thing with Junior Pro. Same just like Junior Pro would be. You would be covered as a part of the Tennessee Risk Management Program. As long as the board. As long as the board. This is a board function. It's a function of the school system, not just Junior Pro. Junior Pro is gone. I mean, that's 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 over. It would be. This is our elementary grades football program sponsored by the Can Can Board of Education as a part of the Can Can Board of Education. You know? So. Don't think that would be very considerable as of this point. As of this point, I'm not checked that yet, but I, I can put that on my to-do list to check and see. But I don't think that would be a, a spike in the premium. Yeah, we have another legal matter that <coughs> we're going to get discussion to would be uh, our new academic procedure for academics. It's not quite in place. We'll get to that next here in a minute. But uh, we think that we can come together, come up with a, a, a policy agreement between our school system and the coaches. They will sign it, accountability, and probably would be able to have access to be able to see the grades. We were, we were kind of iffy on they could actually know kids and their grades, not being already staffed. Non-faculty, they're non-faculty non -faculty. coaches. So since they're non-faculty coaches, what access they would have, they would have access to the principal's principals would, would send them a grade report, which we're getting into the interscholastic uh, policy change thing. But but um, we're going to check on that, on the legality in regard to that. Before we, I think that's pretty and that's going to have to, you sign a confidential, confidentiality <laughs> agreement. And if you... Just like a teacher, if you void that, then right. you could be terminated for that. Okay. So that would be the same thing we would do with with uh, any coaches that are involved right there. 
So again, what Matt said, I think is very, very important that it's vetted. They are vetted, they're vetted coaches. You as a board approve those coaches, just like you do any other any other thing. You approve those coaches. And it's a stair step program from elementary to middle. Right. Yeah. And then to high school. And not just players either. So it's recruiting for me as coaches as well. So I'm right. gonna I'm gonna call Josh and when I first called, do you have anybody looking to step up to the high school? And his first call is gonna be down to Will. See so oh, those, yeah. those people as well. And we're also we're grooming these. If you have the accountability to these coaches, you're grooming just like an athlete. You're grooming a student athlete. That's how I like to say. Because yes. we, we have an academic element involved in that. Absolutely. And that is what we need to start doing. And it starts in kindergarten. Yep. I was going to say one more about insurance. His league requires some kind of insurance. We yes, so, they do, so they do require uh, an insurance. I've got to ask the, the, um, the president there if, if we have to carry a secondary policy. And if that is the case, I have looked into secondary policies and um, we would cover those secondary policies under the, the, the player fee for, for playing football. It's, I think it's like $27 a kid. So it's, it's not very expensive, but you know, it's, yep. right. and then again, if you're utilizing our facilities, County County Board of Education facilities, then you're covered automatically with Tennessee Risk Management because you're on our property utilizing our facilities. So I picture. don't think, Mr. Chairman, that, that's <laughs> going to be very, very minute in any kind of additional charge or fee for that because they are using our facilities. And they are County County students already. Yeah, yeah. and they are good. And the trap team right now. Now, 50 bucks. One, one thing as we get into the interscholastic part of that is as part of County County Board of Education policy now, you have to be homeschool student, must be Follow the TSSAA guidelines for for that. So homeschoolers involved in that program would have the same requirements to have to have same requirements. Getting principal and me know and principal know and having the insurance policy that TSSAA requires. Okay. So that would have to be as part of your whole. You know, when you get started as a homeschooler comes up, then this is this is the procedure. Yeah. Do we have any homeschoolers playing football? Yes, ma'am. We yeah. do in your age group. Okay. We have one last year as well. So Will, when we sit down yesterday, I gave him uh, a lot of what is already in place, right. like for basketball and trap and cheerleading. cheerleading. And so he's going to have a sheet that will have uh, his directed that he hands to parents saying, right. okay, you know, you're part of this program now, so you have to have, if you're a homeschooler, he's going to show them a policy for homeschooling and be in his, in his sheet. Right. And the, and the million dollar liability policy has to be, and what dates they have to meet to be a part of homeschooling. And they have to meet those criteria. Yes. Well, yeah. They've got to meet that criteria in that, in that time span. Yep. If they don't, we can't, we can't do it because that's the board policy is, you will meet these guidelines. And we're going to develop those guidelines as the next phase of the interscholastic agreement that we're pushing on. Okay. So then all his all his word and a word back to what not covered in this particular sheet is covered by the board policy. Correct. Okay. I think it's a good thing. Thank you guys. I appreciate you stepping up where we do. Yeah. And I'd say it's a big piece of your of responsibility that you stepped up to, and that's what's all about community engagement, mm -hmm. and that, that's why I really, really appreciate it. Where did your son play? The you were so. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I had a son that came through the elementary program and into uh, middle school here, and so I really I'm excited about this. Yeah. It, it goes up a notch, maybe yeah. three, four. So yeah. I it's a community. Uh, it's, 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 they're excited about it as well. So. Yeah. And you played for Will, huh? Yeah, I played for him. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you know. Yeah. And played for him. I played for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and props on the, on the clinic you did a while ago, yep. or a few weeks back, and then the little fellas came and did their flag football. Yep. We talk, I talked to some of them that were there, and they loved it. It was a big deal. Yep. So, yeah, I get, it's getting excitement about football at that age. It excites me. So it's great. So. And the coaches are going to bring kids to the high school football game. 
which will be great. Mm -hmm. He'll get to feel that environment. Right, right. And they'll go, well, hey, this is what's in store for you down the road. You can be here on this field and, and play for the high school. Well, really I worked great. again a lot when I was at the high school. I'd say those junior lines come in all the time. So, so, <laughs> show me you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always do. All right, item number six is to review the interscholastic athletics policy. Um, wait, you want to take over? It could be short and sweet because I'm going to table it again. <laughs> It's going to be tabled again, guys, for one more month. I promise you, next month. And that's, that's, that's reading. why is because of some of these questions we have uh, on. Uh, What's the biggest issue you want to answer? Well, some of got to answer tonight, but it's too late to put it in any kind of form, but mainly the confidentiality. Uh, yeah. Well, that's. Y'all might not know, and you probably may not know this, but I, let me let me read this real quick to you. But what's what's happened? Uh, the coaches, uh, Courtney, Mr. Nichols, and uh, Matt, and all the coaches got together, and they came to consensus that uh, they wanted to do something about athletics. I've been I've been working on this for five years before I even became a board member. Uh, because I felt like it was fair for all students <coughs> to be on the same playing field. Playing, uh, <coughs> you know, you can go play basketball, and that coach had one rule. When you go over here and play tennis, that coach had another rule on academic. I thought we should. Everybody should know when they go to play sports, they already know what the rule is, and uh, so they're all oper operating under the same uh, constraints. Uh, the coaches will be required, and this is for this is really to help them, because we work on a nine-week system. If you get a kid behind and he ends up failing a subject before the nine weeks is up, or at the end of nine weeks, you've lost him. Now, they will be checking every three weeks. There'll be a form carried to the teacher by the student athlete. She will put his grade on there. And everybody's going to have to do their responsibility. Now, there is concern. Say the teacher puts 44 on there today, and two days later, she said, oh, 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 I'm sorry. That was a 68. Don't tell anybody at the end of nine weeks. That's not good. That doesn't help the coach or the player. So everybody's going to have to do their part to make this work. But the coaches will check every three weeks. And between 60 and 69, there'll be sort of a probation period there. And it'll kick in when they fall into that category once there's a, a grading period, like three weeks. And then that coach can go to his player and say, look, hey, man, you're going to have to get some help. What can we do for you? What can we do to get your grades up? And the local school, the principal, whoever the principal might even put over that, I don't know how it's going to be worked out. But uh, they will have a chance to get that grade up. And the next six – the next three weeks, they'll check back. Hey, he's making progress. He's almost there. Or no, he's fell back further. Whatever the case may be. But at the end of nine, he's got to be, he's got to be passing. Okay, well, he'll I... have to lay out three weeks and get it back up. And if he can get back up in three weeks, he's eligible again. It doesn't have to wait to nine. I think that's the fairest thing, fairest way to do it. And one thing that Mr. McMikins is, is doing is developing a we're developing a handbook for elementary, handbook for middle grades, handbook for high school. High school's already done. I mean, it's already. And the student uh, athletes will have these in their hands. That's correct. Yes, they will know what the consequences are walking into it. I got another question. I love this. You know that speaking my love language. Yeah. Okay, so you go grades. <laughs> what about behavior? It's in, it's in there. Behaviors in there, consequences yes. for behavior. ISS and OSS comes into play. What about and uh, also behavior attendance comes into play. Behavior on and off the field or the court or where or a tournament or wherever they're at. Yes. Yep. And part of that is in TWSWA already in yeah. high school. The coach is already 
most of them already worked at the school or at the hospital should be an issue. The grades are not a problem. A middle school or the grammar school academics, if the parents sign something to agree that the coach had access to it, would that clear? Well, I'm, we're looking at the legalities on that. I sent Mr. Jennings a, an email in regard to that. He's, he's researching yeah, it. I mean, you could literally state it in the policy that and, and they will be held to confidentiality. Coaches would be held non faculty coaches. I, I agree with that. You know, I understand that. But if the, the kid couldn't play, if the coach can't see it, you understand that's correct. Going? Absolutely. Uh, that's important because we got we got to keep it. Coach has to. You know, we're not saying access to Skyward, but we would say access to when the principal would report those grades on that third the, the three week progress report. Coach has a copy of that to say this is how your student is doing. And I think that's perfectly. I mean, they should require. They do that anyway with the high school with non-faculty coaches. The, the, the few that we have. Maybe they school. should require from the students to bring them a cop, their cop, and show them their three-week grade report. That mm -hmm. might be. Give them something to be proud of. They get lost. Even if they want to play football. I think the question I have on that: these kids are paying to play, right? Do you want to? These kids are going to pay to play, right? They will pay a certain yes. fee to that. Yeah. Just like all their Just like the. But well, does well, your grammar school players yeah. have to pay a fee to play basketball? Let me open that up to principals. Ms. Cossie is here, uh, elementary principals. They have to, they have a fee or anything they have to do to play, to play basketball. I mean, they buy their shoes. They sell stuff. They have booster clubs. Don't they do? I know at Auburntown, we sold stuff to get new uniforms and things like that. Yes, but okay. we don't buy new uniforms like every year. But yes, like if you're going to buy new uniforms, we would have a better There's some parties we can. I guess I'm just looking at that. I paid $200 for my kid better play kind of deal. No matter what his grade time. Yeah. 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 But now in high school, they have, Where if they don't is? sell enough tickets, they have to pay a fee to. But yeah. to have everything. Because mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Daniel's one. Say word about that. So we do have a player fee. We offer opportunities for them to fundraise to offset that cost because our our sports just be so expensive mm -hmm. and we don't make enough game money to cover all those expenses. Plus, it's front loaded. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have a player fee. Do we say you can't play unless you pay this player fee? No, we don't say no, that. No basketball doesn't either. We have them come and talk to us and say, I, I need some help with this. We found jobs for them in the community. I'll call somebody I know and say, hey, this player wants to work for you for a couple few hours. Can they work off some of their player? Absolutely, they do that. So we never turn anybody away. We also tell them that, hey, this doesn't guarantee any playing time. This will buy, most, mainly it goes to buy your spirit pack that we, wear, that we get for them, that we spend money on. Them. And we, we want them to be, to, to look good, to feel good about what they do, and part of that is raising enough money for them to to wear some Canyon County gear. Could they possibly do the same thing rather than would, pay a fee? Do yeah, we would, we would offer those same things. Okay. Okay. Coach, Coach, Lance, Coach Lance, you uh, you do the same thing in middle grades. Yes, sir. We do the same exact thing. We uh, we we try and you know we we do fundraising, and it's the same way in high school. We you know, do a player pack. Same way the high school does, and we set up a, a price amount of what that's going to be. But uh, we don't turn anybody away if they can't afford, you know, or you know, whatever. We still work that out, you know. Um, we ask that each person is responsible for this much fundraising money. We don't say a player fee. We say, hey, look, each each player is responsible for, say, I don't know what it's going to be this year, two hundred fifty dollars, you know, your fee to fundraise. So whenever we fundraise, we say, hey, this is what you're going to do. So whether it's lift a thon or go cards or whatever we're selling. That's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't guarantee playing time, and it doesn't mean that they can't play. They don't have it. It just helps uh, cover that price for that. Sure. You're looking at basketball. You got ten players, twelve players, fourteen. Be a big basketball team in grammar school. Shoes. Oh, yeah. about it. I mean, I'm mean, in football. Shoes is just starting. That's the ground up. I mean, mm -hmm. it's expensive right. sport, right. and you got to have you got to raise some money. I mean, gas to mow the grass, my lawnmower upkeep. Uh, facility upkeep it's it's daunting i have a question have you considered sponsors absolutely i'm not going to offer a sponsor <laughs> <laughs> i'll take you up on that if you want. 
we have a lot of partners in the community. Um, one of the partners that partnered with the school board recently was First National Now Capstar Bank helped put in the sound system. Um, but we are one of many organizations that keep going to the well for sponsorships. So everybody is hit up so much. We are gracious to have enough sponsors in our community to do our banners. We're going to try to do a media guide this year so that it's not such a big burden um, on the banner sales. So they can do that. But then Will's got to look at doing something a little bit different because he's competing with high school fundraising at that point. Josh is doing the same thing when he's thinking about a fundraiser. I don't know how many times they've come into my room and said, I've got this fundraiser. So we already do that. I would much rather a kid come and say, would you like to donate $20 to help me pay for my stuff <laughs> than buy something? I would rather just give them money than buy donuts or something that I'm not going to eat anyway. So, and then they get all the money. It's, a, it's amazing how much people give at those bucket stops. I, I've never failed to get less than 500 on Saturday. Car wash. Car washes. Car wash. Resell the tickets. Yeah. People don't come to the car wash, but you've already got your money. Yeah. So we did for cross country. You've done this before. Oh, cross country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People don't yeah. come to car wash, but they'll be glad to buy the well, those no, seven I, tickets you've got for sale. Income through the system that Jim's programming. We're yeah. Financially challenged to say the least. You guys know that it's it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting sometimes. But it's like you said, people. Are willing to give for that. They have, they have for a long well, time. We went through probably the worst year that we could probably go through financially speaking, as far as a, a sports because of attendance regulations and everything. Yes. And we were fortunate enough to have enough of our partners stay with us to have completely paid off our debt um, out of the last year. So it was it's an awesome year to, in that respect, that people stuck with us. We had some people say, "Are you going to have a football season?" TWS of Lace says we are. So mm -hmm. please stick with us. Tennis was down. Um, it was tough, but we made it through that because our community partners believed in us. Yeah. One more. Give me one more. You think we'll have another? I mean, we'll have a full policy on it. That's what we well, hopefully, we'll 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 go ahead of time. Wayne and I have been working on it, and it's already a page long, but I mean, without the, even the handbook. But yeah. what you're looking at, uh, board members, if you mean, if you look at your policy 5.301, interscholastic athletics, basically the only thing it said about about elementary or, or anything that is that you're going to go by the TWS AA that involves a homeschool student. That's all it said. So we're going to have to uh, rewrite. And then once we get that, I'll send it up to uh, Jennifer White at TSBA, allow her to, to go through. She's general counsel lead uh, for you know at the TSBA that you utilize all the time. I'll send that up to her. We'll send it up to her and then and then we'll say see you know see attached basically see attached um, uh, handbooks for each one of those grade levels. And like I said high school's already done that Wayne's already worked with Mr. Uh, with Mr. Lip, Mr. Nichols and the athletic director schedule on getting all of, getting that done for the high school. So that's that's the good news about that. And then you're you're mirroring basically that kind of policy. And then plus the elementary basketball rules for the elementary and looking at those same kind of rules uh, for that. But you know, you think about the sports you've got in middle grades, football, basketball, baseball, softball, uh, trap team, fishing team, and cheerleading at the, at the middle grades level. And eventually you're gonna see volleyball. Eventually you're gonna see middle grade soccer. You're going, to, you're going to see those those mirror sports at the high school level come all the way down into your in the middle grades. Plus, I think on down to think about elementary right now. You think we just have elementary basketball, but we've got now elementary football. You've got uh, elementary trap trap team. Wade's, Wade's familiar with there. Uh, your fishing team goes down to elementary levels. We've got an elementary fishing team. We had elementary so. cross country at one time, and then you have uh, the cheerleading. So. You've got you've got all of that that you know I've been through car cross country is one that you got at middle grades already. We did have that elementary at which time. But you got your walking clubs that that Ms. Bonnie Witt has been working on doing those and that prepares them then for your cross country. So you've got all these that are that are coming on. 
and that goes to the elementary. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a party gift for you when you guys leave. No one a hat for everybody. So, thank you. No, the hat wearer, you take it home to you. Snip it, mother. If you look today, you can wear it. I'm just kidding. It's all hard work there. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, Tanya. You know, I'll put him in the past few weeks. Yeah. Well, it's All right, I'm number seven. the table for a while. Uh, for an invitation for a presentation at Auburn Town. Mr. Curtis, how are we on the information? Do we have enough? I think so, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I mean, what I have heard from you know, Gregor Smee. And we did have information on the metal roof. That's part of my board report to you. We've got good results there. We think we're going to get additional, got the email today, additional $148,000 on the metal roof at Woodbury Grammar because of our efforts. In addition to what they are? In addition to what uh, Tennessee Risk Management, we're dealing with Travelers, which is the insurer of Tennessee Risk Management. And I got a thing today that we will we will get an additional one hundred forty eight thousand dollars on top of the three hundred eighty five. So we're going to be pretty close to the metal roof at Woodbury Grammar. Right. That's the existing building. Now, on Esther, on Esther one point uh, one or two point oh, Esther one point oh done. Esther two point oh, you kept one million dollars for the expansion of Woodbury Grammar. That's given. We're done. I mean, that's Miss Mullins. I'll be on mute there and, and talk about that. We're, we're done there. Now, ESSER 3.0 is, is we've got till August the 15th on ESSER, uh, ESSER 3.0 to get all of our literal ducks in a row and send to the state of Tennessee. But ESSER 3.0 is a whole other category of stuff. I mean, they're looking at the paperwork and everything that's going to be done. I'm advertising an ESSER 3.0 position right now. Uh, for just dealing with the paperwork aspect. I, I need the exact number of money that we're getting. I need to know exactly what we're going to have to spend because we've got to spend at least the twenty percent on academics, correct? Credit recovery and twenty well twenty one percent with the administrative cost and yeah one percent we have to spend on correct administrative cost. So the board needs to know, and you need to get with Mr. Alphalon and stuff before we go tell people something. Yes, sir. We need to know. Exactly what's going on, and exactly what we can and can't do, and exactly how much money's there. And Miss Mullins, if you'll unmute our federal programs person who will be uh, uh, doing with this, with that, uh, Miss Mullins, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Uh, yes, yeah, so I believe it's actually Esther 3.0, it's actually due August 1st. Um, I can get my notes out and look. I can email, email you a um, a number and I think Mr. Curtis has shared that previously um, of how much that we will be allotted for 3.0, 3.5 odd million. And then 20% of that does need to go to learning loss, which equal out again, I'll have my numbers in front of me, but it equals out like 700 and something thousand that's specifically designed for learning loss. 20% 20% for learning loss and then 1% of that. And then correct for administration. Thousand dollars basically for three years of monitoring. Yeah, I have heard right. I've not heard. I've not heard anything in recent days. I did not get to attend the uh, commissioner's update, but I don't think there's anything right that depends on what Congress no, does. As for four point dollar infrastructure, Kathy, do you hear anything on for your? Favorite? No, I've not heard. You had uh, you had brought it. You had brought it up, but no, I've not heard anything my way through federal. Mister. Paxton. Paxton. Paxton really did bring up a good point there. We also need to know if we did, we make that money for something and 4.0 comes along, can they intermingle? Because if they can, you did bring up, I'll, I'll give them credit for that. That was a genuinely good point. Uh, well, let's just say this. If you if you do the wing at Woodbury Grammar for, let's say, 2.5 million, just for discussion's sake. Mm -hmm. If you did that, that would be completely different from the infrastructure bill that you could possibly do for a, a middle school, if that's what the board is supposed to do. 
but could you use the infrastructure to, to pay for any additional costs on the grammar expansion? I mean, can they interchange? Well, there's no guidelines even plugged in and passed it in Congress yet. So. Yeah. We barely got the guidelines in for 3.0. Yeah. They're going to be hundreds of pages long. Oh, uh, I've not yeah. talked to Diane. I've not talked to Diane or Douglas. They were at a meeting today with the comptroller in regard to 3.0. Um, let me see if uh, I don't see Diane on there. Uh, Douglas, can you unmute? If he's listening. You know how. Oh, okay. Hello, Douglas Jennings. Good evening. Uh, Earth to Douglas. Can we hear? You? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, I can. That's good. Okay. All right, Douglas. Uh, did uh, the comptroller say anything about the infrastructure? The bill on ESSER 4.0, or known as the infrastructure uh, bill, and did he say? Did the comptroller say anything today about that? I haven't heard anything. Okay. Did you go? Did you go to the, the, the comptroller's thing today in Lebanon? No. Okay. All right. I'll have to talk to Diane then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Diane and Neil Applebaum were going to represent Cannon County today at the comptroller's thing, and he said that he probably don't know that he does probably not the same thing we know. At the monitoring Congress, but that's a great question. On can you can you mix the infrastructure and 3.0? And 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 here's a question I have: What are your plans with 3.0? You said it's approximately 3.5 million with 20 percent for learning loss, and then one percent for admin. So with the remaining two point whatever, what are what's the the plans for that? We haven't even talked about that it. That is due on August the first. We have August the first to talk about that. That's going to be a big topic of discussion. Time. Yeah, because we've been trying to get the budget done. Hopefully by August, between now and August, also we'll hear more about four point oh. Hopefully, but three point oh, three point oh. We do know the rules. The preliminary rules are this: twenty percent of that for learning loss, one percent for administrative cost. We do know that. That's not going to change. Right. And, that the, rest can be used and the rest can be used for facilities. But again, the paperwork on this is going to be horrendous. And I, I still keep saying that to the board. And I've been told in every meeting I've been with the commissioner, every webinar with the commissioner, you better, you better be hiring person, additional personnel to do this month. Have you started looking for additional personnel? We have indeed. It's already been advertised. Okay. Ms. Cassie, can we yes, vote on that? Can we vote on that in July and give you yes, we'll, to get that in, or is it going to, have to be in June? No, we need to vote on it in July. It's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. and hopefully, I'll have a yeah. hopefully I'll have an extra person in place too. And that's the one we talked about. It was only three years. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and the people interviewing know that it's it's a three-year position. It is a three-year position, and they understand it. That yeah, that's how, it, that's how it's written. That's yeah. how we post it. I'll show you. I'll be glad to show you all that as you're walking out. It's posted in your acceptance application. Absolutely. When does it close? Uh, I closed it on. I'll have to go back and look to be sure. Kathy, when does that, when does that close? I have to go back. No, I'm talking about the position for the ESSER, ESSER person. Correct. So it has to be posted uh, for 15 days, and I believe the last day is May the 17th, um, is so what I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, like uh, uh, April the 28th or something is going to be posted that. So. If we have it with a start date of June 1. Right. That'd be great. So I'm, I'm currently seeking applicants. Have you had any? We have one nibble. <laughs> We've had one nibble. I've not got the hook in yet, so I'm, I'm trying. So I think we're I think we're going to be pretty close on that. And uh, they may create a vacancy somewhere else, just like what I've already experienced recently. I mean, we fully covered seven. I don't think we got so. we started on it. <laughs> And I don't really think we've got nothing to say. I mean, not enough to vote on to say we're going to go. I mean, in my opinion, that's just mine. Well, I've already told them. I, I don't care to talk to them. I just want to have something every, to talk about. Every bit of information yeah. that I can possibly have. 
because I don't want the state to pull the rug out from under me. I don't want the county to pull the rug out from under me. I don't want to you know, I, I wanna know if you go tell somebody something, you know. I wanna I wanna know. So would y'all rather us come before we know what we're gonna do exactly with three point oh or would you wanna know that's a loaded question. I mean I'm just because you're already asking and I know it's gonna get asked there and if we don't know. Yeah. Uh I believe you need some plans in place. Uh because you'll get a lot of questions about what are your plans. Uh so I, to come and say we have no plans or we haven't discussed it yet or anything like that, that's just not going to be sufficient for our inquiry. So I believe it'd be better come prepared than to come and say we don't know that, you know. Yeah. Right. So July, after we've made some decisions, or we you could postpone it another month and see what you've got then, just like you kind of had planned on doing, you know. Uh, I'm not objected to that. Um, I don't want you to vote yes or no when you really don't know where things are. Man, I wish we could set up a 4.0. That, that's a big it, it, factor. It, 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 Did we get the numbers from the governor on the thing that Mr. Paxson wanted? Did you Were you able to provide that? With the DEP, yes. yes. We have the DEP okay. figures, yes, absolutely. Okay. We, got those, we got the April estimate. Um, again, this is an estimate, the April estimate, and we're going to get the same. Uh, Hold Harmless is there, so we're going to get the same amount that we got in 2021, which is from the county is $2.1 million. We will be up slightly in, from the state because of the raises, $2.9 million, $2.909 in the April DEP estimate. I'm sorry, $2.909. Got it memorized. $2.909 that we would get from the count, from, from the local source and a little bit more, a little bit more from the from the state because they've added in the uh, the percentage into the uh, the instructional portion of the DEP. They've added more into that because of the teacher raises, and they're going to start out teachers at you know thirty eight thousand dollars, and we'll have to we'll have to follow suit. Okay. And did you get that email to him? Not yet, okay. but I've got it ready for him. Okay, great. Thank so we're ready, ready to go. I can get it to. Him. County commissioners, I usually usually county commissioners as well as this board. This board has a copy of it already. The April one. And yeah, the April one. sent him quite a bit. I sent him four four emails that night after the meeting. Yeah, yeah, but the April one wasn't in there. Though. No, because I didn't receive it until yeah. just the other day. Even yeah. though we were in May, I didn't get the April because they were waiting on the general assembly to act. The okay. general assembly did act, okay. which is good. Which yeah. is good news for county camp. All around, good news for county camp. Okay. We could just get that, that would be great. Yes, I'll send that, but uh, April will be the estimate. Okay, anybody got anything else? I'm going to say, we still got ways to go. All right, item number eight approve the 2021 20, 2022 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 school uh, food service budget. I think we got a copy of that. You do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have a copy of the food service budget. Ms. Insel was unmuted. So if you have any questions on Ms., uh, for Ms. Insel in regard to the proposed uh, budget. Uh, so Jennifer, I'll let you take it from here. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me okay? You're sounding great. Okay, um, I'll just briefly go over um, the food service budget for the 21-22 school year. Um, our goal is to be um, self-sustaining um, self for the 21-22 school year, which means we will not require any GP funds. Um, our revenue will continue to be based on federal reimbursement and all students will eat at no charge for the 21-22 school year. So that will be what we had this year. We'll continue into next year. So we're excited about that. Um, another revenue um, source down is 47115 USDA Food Service Equipment Grant. We did receive $18,000 for food service equipment to be purchased from um, USDA, and we're excited about that. Um, we will follow the recommendation from the school board on whatever y'all decide to do on non-certified raises. Um, I do strongly believe all non-certified employees deserve a raise for the next school year. Their hard work has been essential to running our school system during a pandemic school year. Do um, you have any questions for me?
Yeah, and then he broke us on that on her phone. He had to come ask for money to borrow from general purpose. Yeah. Out. Jennifer, two percent work. Did it work out good for you last year on the two percent raise that you got instead of the fifty cents? You may want to. So this board is probably not as familiar as Mr. as the chairman is. So could you kind of give a little bit of uh, history on the fifty cents? This past school year, we didn't have a raise on non-certified. The year before, we did, and that did work better. Um, when you do a dollar figure amount on raises, that is a lot more than doing the percentage raise for us. If it's something we can plan for, um, you know, I'm not saying we can never do that again or they don't deserve that, but just in those years, it was very, very hard for us to sustain that um, with the number of employees that we have in food service. Um, it's generated more revenue for us to be as a school district free. More students are eating breakfast and lunch and so we're hopeful that more reimbursement will come down from USDA. Um, but the, the percentage raise is very, it's, it's more friendly for a budget than a dollar amount raise, unless you have some years where you're planning for that, so that increase to happen. Just like anything you budget for. All right, so while you're up there, Jennifer, and you're unmuted, um, Tell the board about that email we received and the article that we had national attention to since we have Ms. Cossie here also. Uh, I, I think I want to brag, I want to brag on, on the, uh, the breakfast program that uh, in the classroom at, at, uh, Wood, at Woodland, tremendous um, increase in participation because of that. So if you want to tell, please tell the board members about that for a few months. If you would. I'm sorry, my kids are in and out. That, um, article, that article, Okay, some of you may be familiar with the um, nonprofit um, No Kid Hungry. Um, they are a they just fight childhood hunger in the United States, and it's just nationwide recon, um, recognized. A lot of people donate to that cause. It's it's just a great a great um, thing. So, I had been talking with the National Dairy Alliance about supporting us with equipment in our breakfast in the classroom program, and they heard our story about how the pandemic. Um, caused us to have breakfast in the classroom for social distancing measures. So I spoke with them about Woodland's program and what a great success that had was having there, how more kids were eating and how that principal was, you know, on board of having that in her um, school from here on out. I don't think Ms. Cossie would ever want to have that, um, not in her school, but um, we were just honored to be in that article and to have pictures of those kids eating in the classroom. And I appreciate Ms. Cossie for um, making that happen at her school and her staff. So we were spotlighted nationally in regarding something that we had been proactive about, which I think speaks volumes about our personnel here in Cannon County and food service working hand in hand with, with teachers and faculty members to get our kids fed. I think, Angela, you want to say yes, something I, about that? We, I mean, we have our participation rate is up, just like Jennifer said, and I think it's definitely because of that, um, we have more kids eating, they start their day off on a better, you know, note of having a full belly, of course, helps with behavior, their academics, all around, when, you're, when your belly's full, you do better, so um, it's just been a good thing, we want to keep that up. And thank you, Jennifer, for helping us with that and getting us all the things that we need to make that happen. So, There's lots of organizations willing to give money to that to make that happen. So breakfast in the classroom is great, but we need what we need to make it run very smoothly. And um, the thing about our county is kids like a hot breakfast. So, you know, we can do things like Pop-Tarts and Frutals and mini cinnies, all things you've seen on the menu, but nothing works like a sausage biscuit and a chicken biscuit and breakfast pizza. We just know that's what our um, our students like. So if we have the right things in place to get that still warm, the milk still cold to the classroom, um, it can even be better. So the National Dairy Alliance and No Kid Hungry are gonna make that happen for us and we're very thankful. You got some grants, you got some grants too that uh, we're, we're very, very pleased about. Uh, yes, sir. Part of that. So that to me, every grant helps. Yes, sir. Um, also, if you don't have any questions about the budget, um, there is a budget resolution in there from food service. And all that is that um, Teresa Lewis position is split 50-50 between um, 
food service NGP. And when we did that, um, I guess we were off a little bit on the how we split that. So I didn't have enough budget in that line item. Anytime there's a change in salary, there must be a, um, a budget resolution to um, the Board of Education and the County Commission. That's just comptroller um, rule. So we just brought that to that attention at the end of the year. That won't be it. That won't happen again. Um, that's budget resolution number one. Thank you all for your support in listening. If I can do anything for anybody, just let me know. Thank you for eating. Absolutely. A million one hundred twenty-one thousand eight hundred dollars. And she made a thousand dollar mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty good math, there, Jennifer. Oh, I don't want it to be that. I really don't, but sorry. We have to own it sometimes. Okay. Uh, well, we've already covered number nine. Anybody got any questions about that? One, one thing that we did there in the budget amendments, we listed them separately. Normally, we don't have a lot of them together. And just for this is, you know, Teresa's first go around uh, as board secretary leading with these, all these budget amendments. So she decided to do them separately, and I didn't argue with that. Uh, I think sometimes you want to talk with them separately, but they may be sometimes when, when uh, as a school, as a new school board member, we may have them bunched together and do A, B, C, D uh, on one. And is there a preference uh, from this board that the way that you would like those in the future? It's, or it's like why we've done it, okay, or would you like to do it? If they're on the same thing. Different line items probably need to be covered different, I feel like. Okay. So you you would like me to continue doing this way in the future when because we may have a bunch here coming up to now and at the end of the month. So uh, if you like them this way, that's what we'll continue to do. Just your preference. It's just housekeeping there, Mr. This is pretty good size, huh? Okay. I don't remember 10 resolution 2021 7. 2021 7 deals with uh, the budget resolution. And the reason the other one was number one, you're in food service budget. That's why you're not in, you're not in a uh, GP budget. Uh, on this one, uh, what this has to do is an increase in revenue. And the reason all of those line items went up is because if you look on the last page, legislation for additional funding for teachers was passed in the Tennessee legislature for 2021 fiscal year. Can can receive $83,000. All of these funds must be paid in, in additional certified personnel salaries and benefits. So that's the last page of that. And that's why these line items went up because we got the money from the state that salaries would go up from, you remember, remember that? Just a few months ago that the salaries we were given enough for it and taxes to go into everyone's salary for the district. We received $83,000 and then that was separated through all of those funds. So I, I tell you what you can use this for, board members, is you can kind of use this to see where all your teachers are located because it just went to teachers. It didn't go to anybody else but teachers. So this is a good little cheat sheet, if you will, to tell you what line items deal with teachers for personnel. I know y'all took notes during the budget, but I, I thought about this when I saw that. I said, okay, that's a good way to, uh, that where you got personnel whose salary didn't go up by those percentages. And we spread that out among all teachers as was done by the Tennessee legislature. Do you have any questions about that? No local funds were expended in this. It was all state funding. Please note that on the report. Anybody got any questions about that? No. I like how that's broke down though. Yeah. I thought you would. Jennifer, I thought about you, but you had your notes about teachers from this from this one. You know, from this I, one. I, I always have a lot of questions. And I, said, and I, said, I said, I thought about you when I saw that. I said, hey, this is a good one to say, okay, this is where our teachers Yes. Are. That's where all of our teachers are at. Unless you get to the federal side, <laughs> that's, that's the only one where it's yeah. not. That's a whole different ball. Oh, another ball game there. Mm -hmm. 
All right, item number 12. What's this one dealing with, Mr. Curtis? All right, this one is miscellaneous refunds. Fees for Chromebooks have been received throughout the school year for Chromebook usage and damage. Uh, the funds collected will be used to replace and repair Chromebooks instead of just going back to GP like it had been done previously. This goes back to where it was. It's $22,000. And 20, we, we received the funds collected will be used to replace and repair and to aid in technology communication expenditures. Yes, ma'am. You can see increasing expenditures because we received that much in damaged and other um, other we have that many Chromebooks get damaged? We have, yes, ma'am. We have those that are damaged or replaced, or, and it's going to be even more because you got a whole lot more Chromebooks now. Uh, You're right, but I know mine knew that if they damaged it, it was coming out of their bank account, not mine. So, so. Some kids are on their third screen when they get it. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Thompson. Wow. Dropping, leaving in a car overnight. Filling water bottle. Yeah. And we got, I, I tell you what, it's very proficient with what you just do. The, what, the 50 bucks? The 50 bucks? You know, insurance deductible. Thing, and, yeah. and you do the insurance thing. That's that's a, if you've got, especially if you've got little ones, and we're going to see more of that because smaller kids now have right. Chromebooks. Yes, yeah. yes ma'am. They've got all the way down to third grade. And if you're going to make them child proof, they're going to give them child Give one of them plastic tablets that they can drop a movie. But it's not, I mean, it's really not that. No, it's not. Kids, they, but the ones that have to pay. Yeah. It's the same ones over and over. Yes. Yeah. All right. I think that was pretty self explanatory. Mm -hmm. Thanks right. for this, too. Number 12. Go ahead, Mr. Number 12. Uh, this is resolution BOE 2020 dash 9. And this one has to do with our summer program. We're getting allotments from the state of Tennessee and these two state uh, summer learning programs will take place in June. And the materials need to be purchased before the camps occur. And the payroll for these camps will occur in July and will be included in the 21-2022 budget. So what we're doing is purchasing supplies that we will be reimbursed for from the state of Tennessee. No local dollars are utilized in this one at all either. Funded totally by the state of Tennessee for our summer program. These are materials uh, that will be utilized. And the other expenses, by the way, transportation, can, uh, I was gonna say, can I hear an amen? Because right. we, did get a, <laughs> we did get additional funding by the state the legislature, the Tennessee General Assembly, as they promised to increase transportation, we will receive an additional $43,000 in additional transportation funds. That you should have gotten an email from me in regard to that just the other day. So uh, that came compliments of Tennessee General Assembly. So you see, Mr. Pody and Mr. Boyd, please thank them for getting that through to help in transportation costs for our summer program. And right now, we're still recruiting students. If you are listening on this webinar, please um, please contact uh, Ms. Emily Hancock at Woodbury Grammar School and get your kids signed up. Do we know how many spots program. are left? Uh, we still had several. We okay. still had, we were still with probably within three fourths. The last time I talked to Emily, we were approaching the three fourths mark. We still have spots available. So no child will be turned away for summer program. We have enough teachers. Yes, sir. More than enough. More than enough. And it's an all day thing? Uh, from eight till two. Okay. And then on Fridays, we're working with the ESP. The ESP program is separate. Uh, Ms. Lisa Black is working on that. And um, I, I, my, if you want me to, Mr. Chairman, I can unmute Ms. Black and we can hear about the you ESP, ESP program. At the same time, at the same day. Simultaneous as the time. So if they didn't get in the regular one, which we're trying to get everybody in there, but we also have the ESP program before and after school. So Lisa, you want to talk about what ESP is doing in conjunction with our summer program? I'm excited about it. Sure. We're going to start before school from six to eight and from two to 5.30 in the afternoons. It's my understanding that Ms. Emily wants my staff there throughout the day to help with um, students in small groups. And then also we will be having field trips on Friday for children who have perfect attendance. We're going to um, the safari, that new safari center they have and the zoo and the discovery center 
So we have some really good trips lined. Oh, and to the space, the Alabama Space and Rocket Center. I may have to chaperone that one. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think I'm going to every one of them, Mr. Curtis. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, Mr. Chairman. I can give the tour. At that one time, I had the most visits. Uh, I had a record. I had a record for twelve years straight of taking students to uh, the Space and Rocket Center. I had to get more permission every time because it's out of doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. before and after. We should get more kids in summer school now yep. that they don't want to be kept in the That's covered in our grant money. Yes, all of this. All no, hey, Lisa, unmute there for a second back. No yes, county sir. funds are expended with the ESP program. Except very no. no, sir, we have our own funds in the LEAPs and the 21st century grants. That's correct. <laughs> the fact that kids don't have to be people at two should help get kids in summer school. And and we we got that figured in and we've got that we got that figured in on expenditures on how many kids we have and how many how many teachers that we need and so uh, it's going to be and, and what we're doing too with Esser Esser 2.0 money we and this this morning's been even on mute on this one. With with SR2, we have one position at the high school. We're adding two more positions with SR3. They won't get paid until probably into September when we get the SR3.0 money. Uh, correct, Kathy, on that? Excuse me, okay, so, so we have one position actually I'm funding through Title II. Our federal consolidated is funding one position. And then the two uh, other positions will be funded um, through another SR funding. That is correct. And did we, we did say a teacher can choose to do one week or four weeks. The same teacher doesn't have to do that all summer. Right? Correct. That's correct. Emily can tell you more about that. Okay, that's fine. But uh, yes, that some teachers may not can do the whole time. So we can do two teachers doing okay. doing the whole week, four weeks, two weeks. Of yeah, that's fine. I didn't want to break it down for one week. No, they need continuity there at least two, two weeks. And these are getting four day weeks, four day the first week of June from that Tuesday through that Friday and the rest of them will be Monday through Thursday each week all the way to the 24th. So how is this tailored to the students? Like if you say you've got a student that's low in this, that, that's it's where mixed in with like how's that going to work? Correct. They're going to be tested. They're going to be tested first first day. First thing to see where their where their problems are. And then the program will be tailored for that. They're already receiving training to do that. And on top of that, some of our uh, teachers our, our early elementary teachers They've already had to have one week of the online training, and then now they're going to have to receive another week in the summer on top of them teaching summers. Because our teachers are going to be, the lower grade teachers are going to be booked as too well, except for about what Angela, what three weeks maybe of the summer that they're going to be if they're doing summer school and they're doing that one week program. About six weeks. Yeah, and that's it's going to be our teachers are going to be busy. I hope they have time to recharge before the fall. We do too, but they choose to do. They choose to teach summer school. They choose to do that. So it's a voluntary thing. So that's a good question, Mr. Mankins. But yeah, we're testing before and testing after. So good stuff. Good stuff coming up with the summer program. So we've got an abundance of teachers and teachers that are wanting to teach. I want a thousand dollars. Not enough kids. And we're, we're still recruiting, so are please. we sending things home with them? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I know Angela, my, my granddaughters are signed up to go. So, Angela, you might want to talk about yes. what we've done to promote some so of the summer program. All kids received a letter. Um, I mean, it's we've had a lot sign up for more than that. Good. Mm -hmm. I said there are 10 new names today. I mean, I, no, this will be at Woodbury Grand. Transportation will be provided from every from every location. And having stuff to do. So it's more yeah. than just that. Well, I know. Yeah. That's how a lot of parents would look at it. Right. It'll be an extension of their school day. Yes. Their school year, so Give them awesome. They won't get bored. So a lot of good activities and with the ESP and helping parents that are before work and after work. So. We're trying to do all our best to help, to help uh, parents uh, during the summer, too, which is unprecedented. We've never had 
we've never had funding for the summer program since all the way. And Dr. Milton may, may unmute on that, but we've not had a, a fully funded summer program in a long, long time in Cannon County. And we used to have the extended, extended contract money, and then that, that literally was de destroyed. Um, and just decreased and decreased and decreased until there's no extended contract period now. So I'm presuming that six to eight ESP, those kids are known to go into the eight to two, eight to two. Correct. 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 There won't be anybody sitting there. Well, I'm not Correct. going to that. How am I going to get? No, they're going, going to either that, either they that go or the both, ESP right? program itself. They can't do both, but they can do both. Yes. Right. The answer to that is yes. And that's intentional yeah. uh, that Lisa, and I and, and, and Emily have worked out that's an intentional deal. So theoretically, they could be there. You now, theoretically, they could be there from six in the morning to five thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, it's a long day though for kids to be there. Mr. Lisa, Curtis, you yeah, go ahead. Mr. Curtis, some of my people probably will be. That's why we're going to work shifts because they would be there that long. And those are long days for us. And, and some people say we're not doing much in the summer. You would tell you would tell them come follow us for a day. Some of your ESP, ESP personnel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Monday through Friday too, because they'll be working so on working Friday. all day on Friday on those. We'll uh, be on working all day on Friday, so we're actually doing five days a week. Some of the money for it was called Stream S T R E A M, and that's a, a, a STEM that's on Steam or, or the STEM program. And it goes to STEAM and it's STREAM. And uh, part of that um, that we're doing there will be, I've asked a waiver to the state and we'll be providing after school STREAM program beginning in the fall. So we're develop we'll be developing that this summer. And there's certain stipulations it has to meet with the, with the STREAM, with the math and engineering. And uh, that's, gonna, that's gonna be a great program we're looking forward to in, in conjunction with ESP in the fall. So we'll be getting additional funding, ESP funding, Plus, we'll be getting additional funding for the stream uh, in the fall, too. So, I mean, we're just abundance right now. So, eight to two, there'll be a break in there for lunch. Lunch, so snacks, snacks, and they will have they will have PE in there, too. Yes, sir. That'll have them get they'll have a period of play. And that's designed by the state that it has to be there. And I think that's good. That's good for kids. They need a time for play. They really do. Okay, any more questions? Yeah. Item 13, declare obsolete the Cannon County Board of Education and Technology Equipment as surplus. I've got a list of that. You have a list provided by Mr. Kofer uh, as of April 14, 2021. This was revised, so you've updated it the May 3rd. Uh, he, uh, he revised the list, so this is, you can look the quantity there, the type, the model, the quantity, and how old it is. So. You can see how most of all of this equipment is uh, in the world of technology. A ten-year-old unit is ancient. They provided many years of service to. Um, once these items have been declared surplus, they can proceed with auction and final disposition of those items. And any questions from Mr. Kofer? He's not on tonight, but he will be there at the board meeting. If you have any questions in regard to these items? You say auction like online auction, online, online auction, whatever, Mr. Mr. Kofi, any way he can get get rid of those items. You just have to declare them surplus as a uh, as a board. And that is his recommendation for surplus. Unenthused. <laughs> We've lost you. We've been here a long time. Yeah, we've been here. We're about to go into budget, so. And I may want to take a recess. We'll go to the restroom before we go into budget. Item number 14, director recommendation of teacher eligibility. Mr. Chairman, uh, we've looked at this at, at great length. Uh, we've had an executive session uh, at the last board workshop. Uh, you will see the names on that list. And this is my recommendations based upon law, not Freddie Curtis opinion or whatever, based upon law. And I work with principals on this. 
in depth, in, in depth. And so you can see the names on there of that reinstated. I will have a formal letter for you on Thursday that with my official recommendation for tenure. And you see this list has not changed since I since y'all I gave it to you uh, earlier at the workshop last week on Monday. And so you can see uh, what, what it is, the eligibility for tenure. And if anybody has a question about that, you go to policy, County Board of Education Policy 5.117. And here is the tenure eligibility, those four points on that. So, go on, Matt. <laughs> Have y'all heard the stories on some of that? Uh -huh. No, you, you really need to go back and look at some of the history of Canada. Uh -huh. They would take, to be granted tenure or given the job, they would they would take a, a month of uh, sometimes the teacher's pay to grant them tenure. It's a true story. It's true. Yeah. It happened. Wow. I was amazed. I sat here one night. What to be hired? To be hired. Your first, your first, first month could be, picked out be given to a. They did. The, and what it, was wasn't, it? it wasn't done in secret. It was done openly. When? That's been know. years. But I, when, I, when we first did tenure, someone was in here and started talking about it. I said, that couldn't have been done that way. And it was. Wow. It literally was. <laughs> Just a joke, folks. For those That's listening. not going to be kids. No, it, but yeah. my pocket looks empty. <laughs> It'll be paid till Friday. <laughs> so there, there is some history there, and it's 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 interesting to, to read about. Uh, but now tenure is here. It is this is the eligible to crimes? It's black and white. There were some people on there that we discussed before, but they didn't meet the low eligibility requirements. And, and so principals had some discussion with that. And, you know, we're, they're hired back, but they do better and turn right around and they'll be eligible for tenure. Here is the list. This is what you got to have. Not Freddie Curtis's opinion. It is state law. So that's what you got. We do this every year, right? We do yeah. every year. And what we're going to start doing because of COVID, we, we did not, we did not. So, this is playing catch up with some of these. Right, and you, you can see if you look at that list, that listing of, of that when you when you pull the full thing apart, you can see and you look at the spreadsheet as which you should you have. When you look at that, that's why some have been longer here longer than others, and some may have not made it that one year, but they increased their scores to make it. So we evaluate this. This is a constant evaluation, but we only do this one time. So you're basically staying a year behind every time you do tenure. You're a year behind. Just remember okay. that. And we're playing catch up with 2021. So uh, you see those reinstated yeah, tenure. Pretty good size. Uh, the reinstated tenure means that they were here, they left us, and then they came back and they have been here two years. That's the only requirement for them. They had it, they get back for two years. And then they, they are eligible for tenure. And then you have your initial tenure. And we, you see the whole thing. I might want to go over board policy 5.117, but there you have it. And we'll be glad to go into the executive session if you have any questions after the after meeting. We're going into the executive session in regard to this. Yeah. Quick question, everybody. Y'all want to take a break before we start talking about the budget again? Or are you going to plow through it? I think Mr. Curtis said. I, I need a quick break, maybe a like two minute break, too. I did the budget get it at 15 and we didn't move to the very last thing. I don't set the order, I just approve what's on it. <laughs> that should have been the very last topic. Let's go ahead here. All right, I'll do that. Room or mesh? <laughs> <laughs> He's got them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Send him a suggestion for you. I'm trying to get the two leaders to do this when we edit here. For a couple minutes. We did this with the budget one time. We got Christian this list and did this on the screen. It was a barbecue. Yes. I'm really going to need just a new one of those. Why don't you drivers. receive them? And like food truck pay you a hundred dollars to set up. Right. You can have twenty. So they different. Some people don't eat barbecue. We have to try to tag so we make sure we 
You know, huh? it doesn't cost you any money. I don't know. But I'll Jam. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's it's set up in spots. Oh, I know, but we did a mission. We do like, okay. I think we had 40 different Nobody things. Uh, it was all barbecue, though. You mean? Yeah. But imagine if I you had. I, I mean, if they just set up and they made all the profit, you just charged them to set up. So I got one of each. I, I tried to get the cheerleader shoe because it's it didn't cost us. Well, I talked to their coach about this. Uh, Ooh, you got it again. Instead of printing it up, I have all. I hate to wear it. Where's my Where's my champagne? It's in earth. Fall from town. Just for the Like grandma wearing it. Twenty bucks. You get one printed on the lens. So your mom's supposed to be on the Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 I like it. She's good. Yeah. Another thing, um, Lisa did this one year, and I really liked that idea when I was in school. See, I've got all that spreadsheet for now. Um, because we sponsor Kelly. Ronnie told me it's going to cost you $150 to get all your stuff. Go find the sponsor. She came to me and said, Hey, do you want to sponsor me this year? I, right. yeah. if, you, if your kids could have an amount, and, but I do love those football cards. No. What do you think about this year? Do you use your wallet when you're trying to work on it? Yes, I do. Wade does not. He likes the card. The eligibility requirement is still at the It's a hard company now. A busy one. Let kids just take a scan. It's right here. They scan it. It's either your eligibility or not. And then you get that one. Yeah, because like Wade's parents would. I would. Wade's parents would. They wanted it. Because they don't even use a gift card. So there's that. Yeah. That's not how we felt on Monday morning in the history. We had blowers out on the courts and The card is, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, Tennessee Tech took off. Okay. So somebody will always come to us. Yeah. The sun was beaming right down. It was spins out on the field. But the sun was beaming right down from the east. Right out. Yeah. And every one of us was. Had the they the good old poop anymore. No, the good old poop box in the four different so There's that. Actually, five. Okay, and they're not that old. Eight, oh, six, and my daughter. So, I remember my daughter. They're not, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I do, I do, like I said, I don't like fundraisers at all. I would rather join campaigns. If you want to sponsor me or I'm selling this, you know, just tell me how much it is. I mean, we didn't do that same trip. I didn't even sell that. So. And nobody comes us. So, yeah, I always try to find these two library townships would come to me, but nobody did that anymore. So, think, remember us.
Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Jennings, uh, we have complied with that. Please see the front page with the budget highlights. Um, the budget highlights there, you can read those for yourself, but uh, you can you can see with notes, and Douglas has made notes uh, throughout the budget, those budgets for you. Um, uh, Douglas was here, is here uh, via the electronic means. And so, um, we're good. So you tell us how to proceed, board members, and we'll try to do our best to tell you there. The, uh, there, there is the highlights, basically, there's a 2% uh, raise is included for non-certified employees. Um, certified employees were aged on the teacher scale and 4% 4, and 4 were, was added. The April BEP estimate was increased by 4% in the teacher salary portion. That usually, is, this is what he says, that usually does not mean every teacher will get a 4% raise. And what it means is that we divide that out, spread that out to all of those. And so it usually ends up it ends up somewhere around 2.5, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. When the state guidelines finally come out, the pay scale will have to be revised and compared with the guidelines that are met. That is a state requirement. That's not us locally, that's not you, that is the state when they say, here is our steps. And I think everybody knows what we're talking about. We're talking about the step increases that are part of the teacher salary package. So um, an increase like that and any starting pay, there's no doubt the other steps will have to have some significant increases. So the sooner the state gives that guidelines, the better, and we have the more accurate picture of that. We usually that usually does not happen until the last week of May, and our budget is due by the commission on May 15th. I've complained about that. Other directors have complained about that. But that's the way the law reads as of the state. Uh, the two summer camps, including the budget for the amount of $190,956. There's also $40,000 in $71,100,399 for the early literacy grant. That has been, again, state funded, state funded stuff. Um, so the grants total of $80,000 will run for two years. Uh, Pre-K has received increase in their funding. As well as everybody will feel talking about pre-K, it has been adjusted in both revenue and the expenditure line items. Um, now, it says they're also remember that the LEAP program will have additional $40,000 to spend on the summer program. Lisa, if you want to mute. Uh, do you know anything about leaps being increased in, in, being increased to that amount? Uh, how much was it? I'm sorry, I don't have that in front of me. Uh, $40,000, $40,000 on the summer program. It, it, he increased it. I, that's a refundable grant. We can't, we don't spend outside that unless it's something that doesn't get approved, but we've really been trying to watch that to make sure that doesn't happen. I don't, I have no idea. So Why he said there's nothing in e-plan yet to substantiate that. It's not no, nothing. But hopefully the revenues will equal the expenditures. And that's what we're trying to do. Right. Lisa, Lisa <laughs> pleasure to do that. We'll spend it it's outside those. What we receive, we will we spend no more than what we receive. Right. That's, I try not to. I think we've went over once or twice for like $1,500, but we're really on top of it this year, making sure we don't buy anything that's not pre-approved. Okay, so we've been diligent on that, diligent. Yes, sir. Uh, medical insurance is going up as, as everything else. The Tennessee Benefits Administration says employees and spouses plans are underfunded, so we expect a larger increase on those with coverage. So we don't know that figure yet. That will come out. Uh, Douglas, can you unmute and talk about insurance, about the insurance going up? Yep, let me see. I'll read it to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. It says it's increasing benefits administration says the employee and spouse plans are underfunded. So expect a larger increase on those with that coverage. So I put about uh, 3% in there for an increase in insurance. That seems to be about what they 
thought it would be and uh, depends on how many we have with the one line item coverage that uh, is going to get a larger increase. All right, thank you, Douglas. Uh, the legacy retirement plan contribution amount has increased about 75% of certified personnel are on this plan. The legacy plan is the older plan, that the older retirement plan. So that's in, that tells you how the age of your personnel too, a little bit that we, we have, that was still on the legacy plan. One of the things that, that is a positive uh, board members on this budget is the uh, cost of electricity and natural gas has been reduced because of EESI of your of the train energy grant. Two largest schools, Kane County High School and Woodbury Grammar School, we were watching that electricity bill go down. So that is a very positive uh, thing there. And a slight reduction in water, they're doing some water things, like you know, conservation, but water's water. Uh, I know Mr. Um, Coach Daniel and I have discussed about on the watering of the football field just depends on how the rain hits. And then if we go into a drought condition or whatever, we have explored the idea of putting a well on that property. And then because you're, all you're doing is recycling because we're having to place sewer on, on that water. Half of that is water usage, but the other half the city of Woodbury charges us a sewer charge. Is there any way to get water out of that creek? Well, that's what we, we can get. The creek up. may dry up. And so, that makes sense. so we're thinking if we sink a well at some Somebody point, it, Miss Nomer, you know what you spend on water and some? I don't, I don't have that figure. Mr. Curtis probably has that figure. We've looked at that maybe about trying to partner with the local well drilling outfit to see what it would cost us. That was one of your, so I don't know. Well, would be, yeah, I don't know what our cost effectiveness yeah. on yeah, how much we pay for water and how much it, we would do if we did a well on that. But it's just better water that you would put on your field instead of the pouring or then treated water. In my, I'm not a groundskeeper coach to any of your better ground. I assume the well water would be fine. That I am, it would be well watered for what we're probably doing. We feed our animals with this well water. So it would be fine on the grass football field uh, if we decided to do something on that. Quick question. Been here a little while, been through a few budgets. These numbers are significantly low. This uh, 68 and a half cent budget has us going in debt almost going. Oh, yeah. Budget. You looked at the bottom line just like I did. 200,000. The 75 cent budget has us only going backwards $23,905. What's changed? Um, and an 85 cent budget would put us to the good at $243,000. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I think. And Douglas, un unmute there. Guys, we've been looking at we've, we've been, been looking at some between 500, 600, and a million, million two at a time. So, what the radio? So, I don't know if that would go off on that to go in there and it's been here a little bit. Uh, what's changed? Well, we've watched our spending, Mr. Chairman, is one of the things. I, I know COVID has worked, COVID and, should not have an effect on the day to day budget, though. Correct. We've looked at a it, numerous. It, it should change our what well, we got to put back, but it should not have an effect on day to day budgets. They, I, these are huge differences. They are. They are. And Douglas has helped us. Uh, principals have helped us. We've looked at expenditures, but then again, we've we spent on what we've had to spend on. We have spent on just. I really want. Really, we really watched what we were spending. Uh, Douglas, uh, you want to you want to chime in on that? These are significant savings in comparison to previous budgets. What has made the biggest amount of difference? You mean how much we're going to save in this school year? Yeah, well, for this next one, you know, we've been going in the whole, you know, half a million dollars or in the whole. Well, your, your, sale, your sales tax is bringing in more. Your BEP is bringing in a good bit more. And the property tax is bringing in more. And from what I've been told, this property tax number is very preliminary. It may bring, the penny may bring in more than what they predicted. The, all the figures are not in. So if you look at your budget on page one, we're right under 68 and a half. 
you will see the $26,776 is the amount that is estimated right now. That could be higher that the penny will be bringing in. Is that what you're telling me, Douglas? Is that correct, Douglas, that this figure could go yes. up? Yes. That's a big jump from last year because it was last year was about 25. Um, so we're around 20. I said from last year, it was like 25,000. So now we're saying 26,776, that's substantial. Yes. And there's a lot of new construction going on in the county and the tax assessor is having a hard time keeping up with it. And, and one thing too, the, the commission voted at their last commission meeting. You remember that fee that was that is given on new construction? That will now be able to go into a line item and we were able to spend it. Where before it went into debt service, only debt service only. But that will be going into our operation of plant line item, and we will be able to spend that money. That, that's going to be about a cent. We think just 25000 but then we had to give 50% of that because of the finder fee that was done with the Barrett organization. And now, after this time, this year, that's already been paid. And after this, we'll get all of it, $40,000 $40, is what it was approximately this year. So that's another nearly... What nearly two cents, Douglas, that we'll receive from that uh, from that fee, from that uh, uh, appropriations fee when you're building a house, uh, and that's by square feet. So even though we lost a lot of money up front, we did lose up front, but then it was freed it where we can use it. We couldn't use it; they hadn't brought it out. That's correct. And so I, I worked with Mr. Applebaum on that, and we're going to be uh, looking at internally if there's a new house then that, that fee will need, need to be policed a little bit, if you will. So that, that line item should go up. This, this change was what? 85 cents. We could actually bank money there. And at 75 cents, we can probably at least break even and quite possibly bank money there. How are we going to convince them to do that? This is the first time in a long time I've seen a budget that looks promising. Promising. That's what I was thinking the word I was going to use. So y'all budgeted last year to go in the hole 1.6 million. <laughs> I mean, I'm asking. That's what I'm, I'm saying here. You budgeted yep. 1.6. Yeah. Yeah. We took everything you out. Only done 280. There's no, there was no money for textbooks. There was no money for uh, capital outlay except outlet just minimal. And you were still in the hole that much. Mm -hmm. And I like the state. It has to balance right. Wow. I have a question on the fee on the new construction. Is it based on the value of the home? What's the square footage? Square footage. So the bigger the house, the bigger the fee. That's correct. That's mm -hmm. right. You're gonna get a lot out of Auburn Town. We're we're ready for it. <laughs> We've got a lot of big houses coming in. Yes. You sure this is right? It's an estimate. Oh, it's an estimate, but the last estimates I've seen have been <laughs> sad to say the least. That's that. What's that? Yeah, going on? It's a child. Yeah, Oliver Springs. Okay. That's why that weather radio was going off. They received that first. There's nothing I saw. The, there's where, nothing else. Where did commissioner go? Where's the last one? Where she had to get it. Last time we talked about changing the contracts for contracts with vehicle owners under transportation. Douglas did that, right? He said one route taken over. Correct. He changed that. Thank you. Yeah. Lisa, you want to un unmute there uh, on the transportation? That one route will be absorbed. Is that correct? I mean, we can do that. We. I haven't told anybody that's going to happen. I didn't know that was a possibility right now. So, but yes, I mean, we can take one easily, possibly two. 
What happened was in last year's budget, we took 25,000, I believe it was, away from the bus drivers and it should have come away from the contracted bus driver. So we're just correcting that in this budget. Can Lisa share one more time? Go ahead, Lisa. How much we would save taking two contracts out this year? Two contracts. We are currently paying um, about $50,000, a little more than $50,000 for each contracted bus driver. If we take two of those and replace it with ours, which we'll have to pay our drivers about twenty two to twenty five thousand, which we don't pay the drivers. That's total fuel, maintenance, everything that would take us down. We would be saving with two fifty thousand dollars. That's rough. And with one, we would be saving twenty five thousand. And you're saying what you know I do, you could do one. Okay, two. Definitely, I could do one. It's very possible I could do two. Okay. Two next year. Okay. And this does include a bus, correct? Under 729 Douglas, would it include a new bus? You see something that says transportation equipment. Yeah, yeah, transportation, transportation budget. budget. Uh, 729. Yeah. 72710. Yeah. Down we usually, to the bottom of it. We usually get $10,000 on that seatbelt grant. That's Liz, correct. That, that is still available, correct? Yes, sir. And we've got that one for the last several years. So we and two other counties are the only one applying for that, and they they give it to us every year. Yeah, fuel may be going up too, you know. Or running out. Yeah. Go virtual. It's kind of a panic going on right now because of that pipeline deal. Yeah. Right now, we're fuel is in pretty good shape. We're working with the county. We're in the county. Uh, they're, they're filling up the new tank, the new tank facility over by the, on the fairgrounds now. So we've partnered with them, so they maybe we've got a little bit better rates on that. Partnering with them. So we're filling up where they're doing up now where they used to fill up. Right there at the old fairgrounds, you know, right there. We've got a file that they do. Not we don't do it all the time, do we, Lisa? We I'm filling up over at the fairgrounds. They use that most of the time. Yes. Is that, so is that right, that? Bob's? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Douglas is the, the police, and he gets after us if we go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right now we're talking about it. Yes, so we want him to take out that and save that money. We need to tell him to do that before next year. To save that amount of money. Lisa, if you, if you did another route, if you did another route, What's that? We're going to vote on that. Yes, sir. So does that change need to be? If you want something, whatever you vote on, whatever budget you pick. So we need to ask him to make it. Wait a minute, guys, how we go back doing that. Okay, uh, Lisa. Yes, sir. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk to the board a little bit about doing another, not just one route, but you're saying the proposal is two routes from this board. Is that what I'm hearing? If you can. Um, I am going. I am going to be cutting two of my routes this year because that we just don't have the number of students. Um, I would rather not let my drivers go and keep contracted drivers, but that's totally up to y'all. They're saying here, can we cut another contracted route? Yes, sir. You assume all liabilities for repairs on the bus system. Y'all need to help me talk through that. I'm asking this to discuss. You, in, the, in the short term, mm -hmm. you're going to save some money. $25,000 per route. Okay. But you're going to, ex, your expenditures are going to increase on your bus because you put okay. more miles on it. You pay that contracted driver almost double what you do for regular driver. 
but they assume all the fuel and all the repair. So yes, in the short in term, the short you think term. you're going to put more miles on your bus, you're going to have more repairs on your bus, you're going to have more fuel on your bus that you assume when you do that. So are we better off to have all contracted drivers than not? I, it's been a that's a debate. It's been tossed around many, many, many times. I think we said something to Mr. Curtis one time to ask what it would cost to get mm -hmm. someone like Durham to completely right. take over. But we're so small, Durham won't even hardly talk to us, correct, Lisa? That's correct. They want to pay their drivers about a hundred and twenty dollars a day, and we we just aren't even in that ballpark. But if you look at if you take the budget and you break it down, we're not spending as much on our buses as the contract is we're paying contracted drivers, even with the repairs and the fuel. It's when we get hit with a big thing, and that's what Javen's referring to, is when we get a, a motor or something big happens that it that it costs us. We still have, how many max force do we still have in, on, in the fleet? Three? We have three, but one of those has been switched out to a Cummins, so we only have two. That's big. That's been our, <laughs> That's been our big. Three, four years. But if you want to go contracted, I would like to buy three buses and stay at home and just run three buses. Say that again for the board. Repeat what you just said. If you want to go 100% contracted, I would like to purchase three buses and run just three buses in your fleet. And you can pay me <laughs> oh, up. Yeah. 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 And I'll stay at home because that's a whole lot more than I'm making now. That's true. But that's a risk you're going to take in anything. Yeah. That's a risk you're going to take driving a 10 year old car versus yeah. going to buy a new car. And making that payment every month. Oh, yeah. Plus, one thing she's saying, she's got two drivers. She's going. You got two drivers that you were going to get rid of this year, right? That you'd rather keep. Right. Right. I, I'm trying very hard not to, but it do not make sense to run those routes right now. And that's, I mean, I had one to retire. She's already gone. I'm not bringing in nobody, anybody to replace her. And then I have another one at Woodbury Grammar I can cut. But if we cut the contracted a contracted driver, then you can keep her job. If you cut a contracted driver, the only we only have um, Denise Smithson or Denise Duke, whichever, however you know her, with one route, Jackie Pitts with one route, and Ricky Estes with two routes. That's all we have left. If I can make a suggestion, I would say if you're not going to cut them, tell them not to buy any more new buses. And when they their buses go out, do not replace them and just take over those routes. That's the that was the road we were on for several years. We would been doing that, and then we've just stopped and let them buy buses at, at will. And some and some contract bus drivers don't buy the best equipment. Don't buy the and latest. They, they will go buy ninety six passenger buses and want us to pay for them for the bus because we pay them by the seat and by the mile. And I don't know if you believe me or not, but we don't have any bus that's got ninety six kids on it. I'd be glad to discuss that off the record at some point with any board members. Right. Right. <laughs> All right, guys. Are you on this? I told you I wouldn't leave the charge anymore, although I am impressed with these numbers. This is a whole lot different from what I've been looking at. Yeah. A whole lot. If I can, Mr. Chairman, I, I would strongly suggest we send the 75 over there and that and have a I think fallback position. My personal opinion, I think with the 75 that we can actually bank money. Because 
we always came in just a little under what we estimated to spend. Uh, now, one of the things I'd like to say too in regarding Mr. McMacken has wanted me to bring this up in regarding coaches supplements need to be looked at big time. I made the Oh, we, we tried last year. I, I, I made it if, if the county would pick up enough that we could bank money that the coaches could have their supplement, but they did not. They did not. They didn't give us a penny. Uh, 75 cent budget is uh, we can we to do that? I think you can. I think so. Now, you'd have to re go back into renegotiations with the CCEA. Well, some and, of that's already been negotiated. We, we, already, we negotiated that as part of the agreement last, well, two years ago, I guess, when we did the last agreement. Okay? That could be reopened and then say, we're going to talk about, we want to talk about one area, and that is the, the coaches' supplements that's attached to that negotiated um, benefit, and then turn right around and open it up and say, this is the board's proposal and we see a counter, counter proposal or whatever and then negotiate that and bring that up and then close negotiations back. You can do that. I thought maybe we should look at maybe our main gate producing sports first. Those coaches need to be helped. And maybe do it in stages. Maybe we could revisit I don't, next year. I don't think that's fair. I know it's not fair, but but if you if you open up negotiations, then you can say, okay, this is the X amount of dollars that we've got. Can we do can we do this? And Matt's been great with the numbers. He has a spreadsheet. And you can go in. Yeah, change, cross country don't even have a gate. Yeah, how do you say the cross country or the volleyball doesn't put in as much time oh. as the football or the? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I you're I don't I don't, I don't like that. It needs to be equitable across yeah. the board, in my opinion. Well, uh, Matt has. Matt has. How many assistants? Two, three paid. Three paid assistants. Mm -hmm. I don't have, have any paid assistants. We have volunteer assistants. So we have about seven coaches altogether. That's what I was kind of looking at. It's getting him being able to keep people that uh, in a program that's that needs it. Well. I think that's allocating head coaches and then a different level for assistant coaches. Mm -hmm. Like the head yeah. using cross country, head cross country is head coach. I mean, they, but they don't have assistants, so they wouldn't have an any kind of assistant right. cost there. And you can pass the 75, and I think I think the chairman is, is very much correct that you could turn right around then reopen the negotiations and then say, it's going to cost, what was that one proposal, Matt? That's going to cost us how much more? So, so that my here? understanding, the memorandum of understanding was open and we just did not fund it. So Correct. So it was 22, approximately $22,000 for that first proposal that we put forth right. to the board. And, and that, that would be that about, a penny, all sports. about a penny more. Mm -hmm. Every sport was affected at that point. That's 20 above what we have right now. We're currently, it was about 25000 that we spent on supplements currently. That would be additional twenty two thousand, and uh, I got with Coach Cable, the athletic director, who looked at the most need. And some sports don't have an assistant coach at all. Mm -hmm. Some sports were woefully underpaid. In the spreadsheets, I put a comparison in there to show everybody what other schools, not just other schools. It's easy to look down the road this way, sixteen miles, and go, "Well, that's Rutherford County." These are schools that T.W. Slade put us in the same region and district with to compete against. I want you to keep in mind. That this was the whole harmless year. Correct. And if you go forth and you spend a whole lot of stuff on something else, and then next year you still don't get all these kids back, it's going to hang you. Just tell them what I see. It'll, it'll hang you. If we lose, I know we got well over 100 and went out. State did us a favor. It's going to be interesting to see where our Roman would be this fall. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. What's that? It'd be interesting to see what our Roman is this Oh, time. yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're getting more and more back. Um, and that's what, you know, I keep looking at the attendance and seeing how many more we're getting back. We are getting more back. But I think this fall, everybody's saying, okay, we've done here 
they're going to wait till next next fall. And you're going to get some that are going to private education. They're, they're going to lose them anyway. This, this, at 85 cents, though, guys, you're, you're looking at banking money. Then you're. Mr. At, Curtis? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Douglas. Just remember, there's a couple elephants in the room, and one is the teacher salary line items. They they could change a lot when the final numbers come from the state, and of course the BEP could change also. And that's what this April. That's what the we, the April estimate is really to helps us to get this guess to the commission for their perusal and they're going through it. Well, and I'd like every one of you to come with me to the budget committee once we once they set the time that they're going to review our budget. <laughs> and 85 cent budget, makes, uh, my hugest argument for school from consolidation go away. It goes away. Because we can actually bank we can actually bank money at 85 cents. And we were at 85 cents just a few years ago. How long ago? Four? Four. It's on that if you look at your budget estimate. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's about right. forty four years ago. Yeah, and then and then they just started slicing, 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 and dicing, as they say. And then they started and they continued that onslaught. See, we were going backwards million, million two there three or four years in a row. We were going for everything, trying to keep everything the way it was. Another thing that changed a little bit too, you know, we didn't put anything in for textbooks this year. We put 50,000 in for next year. You got some, a year some years we've got like 200,000 in there and we have to scramble to give what we need using that. Marcia can tell you a lot more about that than I can about what we have to do along the way. And, and Lisa, your your three-year bus deal, uh, when is that coming down the pike where you got to have to buy three buses during that one year? I think it's next, uh, 2023. But that one of them's already gone, Mr. Curtis. We're just we're it's working the way we've been doing it we've just got to put a bus back in the budget okay because i'm trying to stay ahead you may or may not have to do that in that third year with the three buses that are coming out right i don't think you'll ever have to purchase like that again that's okay. that's my goal is not to let you have to do that okay i think we should send 85 why not? Yeah, I mean, but they can always come down. We can't go back up. I've sent everything in order over there and got it reduced or held the same. But, I, but if we send it, then nobody can say we didn't try. The last three years, the, the commission has given you 68 and a half. And Wade knows how I was done over there the last time at the last meeting. Yeah. And I'll just tell you, I want you, this board behind me, the next time I go over there. I'm asking you, I'm begging you, I want you there because okay. the onslaught that we get because they come in with these, all this stuff that's irrelevant about what we you're know talking when that's about. Gonna be. I will give you the date because I'm I'm tired of going over and getting slaughtered well, you by, certain be commissioners, by certain commissioners over you get blindsided. You because they blindsided, they talk about something else. They talk about a roof on the senior center and then talk about land acquisition. I'm just telling you how I've been done, and I don't appreciate. In fact, I'm going to be submitting something to the chairman about they're talking about personal attacks during during the the public comment period. Well, I think about public the attack, personal attacks when you're over there as a department head. And I, I mean, it's just getting. I guess getting. We was over there. He understood. Yeah. It's just getting tired. I got, I got three things. I got three things to interfere all the entertaining myself. Javen's idea, okay, we don't consolidate. So we're going to put money in all these schools. Well, wait a minute, let me get it. Hey, well, let me just keep that. Keep that well, I got okay. that fresh on my head when you, when you said that. Most of these budgets, and Douglas does a real good job at it, I want to say, with most things are probably a little overestimated. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And you have to do that. Yeah. You have to do that. You're going to be able to save money. 
Okay, in a little while you can start making major repairs. Yeah, that's see, what I'm getting. You, you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm getting at. at an eighty-five cent budget. Okay, if your argument goes other places, then it's not that you can't afford to do it anymore. You you can afford to keep them open, and then in a little while, if it stays at that, you can start making major repairs. But you can't guarantee we're going to get that eighty-five every year either. We might get it in four years. It's a start. It is, it is. I agree. That's what I said. I think we should take the 85, take it over there, and they can always say no. Okay. So that that's one, that's one element. We're gonna to have to put money in these schools. So we have to find the money. Roofing will be a major consideration down the road. Septic tanks. Bathrooms are terrible in some of these schools. They're atrocious to go into. I'm just my opinion. Number two, those three communities with the smaller schools. We've got to figure out how to get more kids in those schools. I don't know what the answer is. Like I told you before, we need about 166 drawn out of three schools to get them in that, those schools. Number three is if these communities want to save their schools, they better get behind their commissioners and kick their rear ends with their boots and say, we need this. So that'd be a good incentive for these other schools. At 85, you've got a shot. Yeah. But they won't. They don't have to get their commissioners on board. The commissioners can't sit there and and knock us upside the head like they've been doing the last four years. Well, and find something else. The county government with school money. Yeah, but what used to be school. Yeah, well, we're funding a lot of what's going on in the county. And, and I and I've told y'all before when they look 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 at the sales taxes up, we've lost money because nobody wanted to pass that sales tax. I mean, yeah, referendum. Now, and you know where most of that sales tax increase came from? Online sales. Shopping. I want to reiterate this to all y'all too. And she's sitting here listening and I want her to understand it. This ESSER money can go to repair work on these schools. Yeah. If yeah. we know we're going to get something, be able to pay everybody to keep everything the way it is and move forward. You, Especially this, the 2.0. This, this, uh, and we can we can pull out what we designated already. We can redo. We can do absolutely we can, we, we, we can yeah. do that. We we pull it out. But there's no need in doing that if I don't have the money. We can't it. do it on 68 now. Yeah. I understand. Or 62 as some would be Yeah. Oh lord. It is it's the math. I mean. But I'll let you know once I submit that on Friday morning. But it was, it, I'll, I'll know I'll when they're going to schedule the schedule for the budget committee. It wasn't right. that long ago that we were at 85 cents. 88. But we were at 85 not long ago. Well, was it wasn't it a dollar? Oh, it's been no, three dollars more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It was 80. I'm oh, sorry. 2014, 15, 16, 85, and 17, 18. 89 and a half in 2011 through 2011, it was 89 and a half. Listen to this 2012 went to 90 and a half. So it went up, went up, and then dropped back down 13 to 86 and a half, and then went to 88 the following year. So we've been right in there historically in the last so we 10 can years. Stay between 85 and 90. But there's the possibility we won't have to consolidate now. Absolutely not. No, and you can actually make repairs. And, and have and, and use the extra money on what we already have. Existed. But you're going to have a major roof expenditures coming on those three small schools. Where does that money say? That's, 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 that's exactly right. We you can. can use it as long as it helps the air conditioning and helps them. Do it. Actually, the insulation. So we're talking about keeping everything the way it is. If we can get this money, I told everybody that a thousand times you got the money, you can make things happen. Was this going to be academically the best decision for this county? That's on Mr. Curtis. It's a tough road to hoe when you've got that many buildings. You said a budget and policy. Like this, you put all that money in, somebody's going to have to make it work. What's the best thing for every Kent County student? Somebody's going to have to make, make this system better for the kids academically. I'm we stay the system like it is. Laying it out there and telling you what's there and what I see in the figures, and that's the best. This is by far the best budgets I've seen in six years. But Esser, you only get it. You're only going to get one shot at Esser. 
One shot. Repairs make a lot of difference. Probably one, one shot, shot at the Esser. So you have to move that board members. One shot at Esser. Yeah. And previous boards have, you know, have been, you know, we've kicked the can down and kicked the can down and kicked the can down. So it's I'm something already, you have to consider as a board member. I've already said several times that I think consolidation would be better for the county and the kids. But if people okay. don't, if people don't want consolidation, I have a reason to show them I can't make it work. I can't show them that at an eighty-five cent budget right now. Pass, I could. It won't work now. If you were to get it, oh, it's a big deal. I don't think. I mean, enough people show up, enough people start pressing. We. That's that's my biggest argument for years. Is you can't afford it, and you can't the way you've been. But are the commission meetings open for the general public? Absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, there's a public comment period too. Not very long minutes. though. Fifteen minutes. You got three minutes. If you got a big group, you got to use spokesman. But they three just minutes. Three after. They have. They have. They have, have, they they have, they have a filibuster or something going on. And they no. won't. <laughs> they'll give you one shot to speak. It's not like our workshops. Now that our retro meetings on Thursday night, we don't allow much public comment because we're, we're doing all this for you now. Right. But you're free to speak here. I mean, nobody's ever. I mean, I, this is why we come and do this. Mm -hmm. This is let you and. Usually we don't have anybody here, but no. you guys have been showing up, which is commendable. Which I'm glad to have some interaction because having it, but here's your shot. Yep. Understood. <laughs> so. Understood. My wheels are turning. I do. I think we should send the 85. All they can do is say no. That will allow you to bank a little money and start putting stuff back into. I mean, so, they may only knock it down to 70 instead of 68, but 70 helps. A well, I know, but I'm just saying if we start low, they can go lower. And, and start and higher. Two, we we go the rest of 3.0, you can supplant all you want to. I hate them saying that, but you can supplant massive categories, clean supplies. As long as it has to do with the COVID, you can, you can supplant all you want. And that's what some systems are doing. They're supplanting with the federal funding and then they're turning around and they're trying to bank what county commissions are giving them but then a lot of people are looking at well you're just banking it you're not using it so you just didn't, don't need that much and then they start whacking you and you know if you do too much supplanting you you violate the cardinal sin in budgeting is using non-recurring money for recurring expenses i would vastly say don't do that but if you've got one-time expenses then then guess what? You've got one-time expenses and then you made a lasting impact with that amount of dollars that you're going to use. So that's what I would advise you to do is, is use this money where it will go the longest and go the, the deepest in the future for Kansas kids. You get 68 and a half again. Yeah, and that's what they'll tell you. You're, 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 you know, two, three years later, four years later, you're back when this thing subsides and the money dries up, and it will, then you're back to a 68, 62, it's Penny's bringing in more. Ladies and gentlemen, let me warn you that every time I've gone over there in the last three years, yep. every time, they'll say, it's the same amount of money. Yeah, but you, the same amount of money. Our expenses go up. Yeah, but they don't they, want to talk about it. They, they don't want to talk about it. Know that. Up, they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about you're getting more money. You're getting the same amount of money. We have stayed at 85, and I have said that at many commission meetings. I wouldn't even be bringing up the fact that we're out of money or we're, we got to consolidate. We didn't say that. Look at that big, the big happened. one that I gave you about what's happened since 2000. Uh, that the big, what's happened to the, well, the percentage. I mean, you didn't even see it. I know. I know. I know. Uh, cool. Just, just memorize that a little bit, and you can. I don't look at it anymore. I, I know, but, but that's where it's been. Year 2000, we were dollar fifteen. It was for two years. Twenty-one years later, we're at six. That's almost the dream, but yep. That's like. We could be working on these buildings and keep these buildings and preparing schools or, or whatever. But. but it would be nice to sit here, and I've said this, a, I don't know, a hundred times anyway, for us to actually sit here and consider how we can make kids' lives better. 
stuff like this and had the money as to sit here and just talk about what well, we would like to do. No, and my, and two, and two. my last four years of sitting here have been how am I going to keep seven schools open? It's not on what I can do for the kids or how I can make their lives and stuff better. It's been how do I keep seven buildings running? And I, 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 I'm and the money I've been getting, I'm, I'm tired of having the conversation. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to debate it anymore because I can't. I, we can't. One thing I would, and a half. You can't do it. Right. One thing I would tell you too, think about the kids here in this present day and who they are in 21, 22. But I think you need to think about too, what about the kids in 25, 26 or 28, 29 yeah. or 30, 31? We've never done that as we've not we've not been forward thinking as no, a board but because we're having to do it's kind of like my job. I'd love to talk about the vision and mission and goals and, and beliefs and everything, but I'm so busy doing the, the everyday activities of the of, of the of the school system that you have to just say, okay, I'm gonna take the time to think about the, the, the 2030, the 2031. And I'm long gone. So Think about those kids too. And your buildings are getting older by the second. And you've got to think about that too. I mean, the new Wood Bay Grimmer is 20 years old. That's yeah. correct. Your high school, your high school is now older than the original Woodbury Central was when it was condemned by the state of Tennessee. Now you start thinking that. that and, you can. Yeah. and we're doing what we I can. Would leave, listen, we, Academically is what we really have always had the vision for is the academics. The CTE program. It's going to be very, very difficult to offer those things music, art, with CTE, seven, with, with, with that many campuses. Schools. With that many campuses. That many campuses. And VEP won't fund it for it is. VEP won't fund it. There's not the their square footage is not there. You have to build on again to them. And like we just like you just mentioned, these schools are going to be some of them are going to be pretty old here shortly. Well, <laughs> they're already old. I don't they're know most of your ages in this room, but I mean, you know, 1956, 1957, 1960, well, 1961. I was born in 63 and I'm 58. I graduated from high school in 62. So. I can say, yeah, better like you can make all of you seem young. <laughs> My high school is not even there. It's a, but it is a junior on there. But, but, but I'm, progressive I'm, I'm, just, that. I'm just saying you've got to think about, too, this budget this year. Sure, you can get by. It looks good. Sure, you can get by. That's what they did last year. And that's what they did. Like, we, we cut last year. I mean, we cut down to the... Derek like, said, cut where you in the hole. <laughs> I was thinking 500 grand in the home was a good year. And if we've mentioned, what we, Mr. Chairman? Teachers are going to come out of college not being able to do what we want them to do in the grammar school level because they're going to be certified in one subject. Yep. We're already seeing that at the high school level in certain subject areas. And that's you know, coming. Broad based social studies degree, Matt, like what mean you got? I didn't have that either. I was the first generation to get okay. that. Well, see, so that don't exist anymore. That doesn't exist what I got. Exactly. So yeah. I'm still going to talk about that. There's there's a lot at the end of the tunnel in an 85 cent budget for people that are anti consolidation. But anything less than that, we're still at the same page. I mean, it's rough and rough and rough. Okay. Do I need to do if, if this is the, the come of the board to send the 85 over there? Is there anything I need to change in the 85? Are we changing the buses? Trustee Oak. How we how we do that? You just let me know which line item I need to change. Well, I mean, do we have we, we need to? We can discuss when it. When do you do a vote? Well, what I do, vote? what I will now here's what I will do. Whatever you want to change, I'll have Douglas to go back through in the morning and change this eighty five, and I'll submit to you to that as an amended budget. That this is not etched in stone. We're still building here. We're not. We're not. The thing is in concrete yet. It's negotiation. Yeah. That thing is in, that thing's in concrete when you send the 85 over there. Right. It's just not. Now, if the budget committee says, we like it, we love it, we want some more of it, we're going to send it on to the commission. Mm -hmm. But you better be talking to your budget committee members then. 
And I'll let you know when that budget meeting is going to be. And that's where, if you want community support for this budget, then it needs to be rallied. Community support needs to be rallied that budget meeting. And that's the first preliminary going to the full commission. And I guarantee you, there'll be some anti, there'll be some anti 85s. I'll just tell the community that there will be anti 85 budgets. There'll be people having coronary over there on the budget. How many on that committee? Five or six. I can get you those committee members. The budget so, committee, yeah, yeah, five or six. But they're community yeah. members as well as commissioners on the budget yeah. committee. Okay. You got Marshall Williams. Uh, you got Brent Brandon. Yeah, Corey. Yeah, Corey. Um, you got um, Mr. James Atkins was just added back to that committee. Um, so you got five or six there. But I'll get you. I get you that. I've got it. I got it in the uh, email. I think you gave me. No, I got new committee yeah, members. Diane sent me the new committee. Yeah. Diane sent me the new committee members too because I added Mr. Atkins. You sent them last time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what y'all want to do? I'm getting sleepy myself. Yeah, we've been here. So, what do we need to change in this 85 that's going to go over? That's my question. Do, is there anything on here you want to change? Do y'all want to go over? The only thing, if y'all noticed, uh, if I understood her correctly, Miss Lisa, if I say this wrong, will you correct me? She said if we were going to go that route, she would recommend letting those drivers know not to, and then as they face out do that. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. So not doing it. Not just, I wouldn't just jerk them. I mean, if you want to, if you wanted to do one this year, we could definitely do that and not be any kind of a struggle for us as far as transportation. But I think the, the best way to handle it is to just tell them don't buy any new ones. If when your contract comes up, we will look at it and see if that's something we can purchase back at that time, or if we're going to need you to rebuy. When is the contracts? I mean, who's got contracts are done yearly, but these no, buses. I'm not talking about their contracts. I'm talking about them purchasing new buses because they okay. go out ever so often and buy newer buses, not brand new, but newer buses. Um, I think Denise has two or. three two years left on one of her on hers miss miss pitts has three years left on hers and i think ricky's got a couple left on his so i just wouldn't snatch them out from an under yeah that's when the buses yeah. expire that's what she's saying she the buses out. expire the buses i said that wrong it's not the contracts with y'all it's their buses that they purchase can only go for 20 years and they're there when they get to the 20 year mark just don't tell them not to purchase anything new or and that's when we need to do this yeah so we're kicking that's kick down the road and that's forget about that And if you want to float this and it does pass, we probably we would have enough cushion in there to go back and look at the renegotiation coaching the coach's salaries for another 20, you think it max 20,000. We wouldn't have to renegotiate that as far as I understand. It's, it's part of the memorandum of understanding. It was mm -hmm. already approved by the board and uh, if the money's there, the money's there. We if the money's there, we can go ahead and the money from the school okay. board. All right. okay. You're looking at I'll talk to Brad to make sure that I think the only thing that would change is we that was phase one and it just got phase one started so phase two I don't know that too. Right. Let them see what and the CCEA was very accommodating. Yeah, it was very accommodating. They don't say they had some I think the appendix in here is marked 216 to 217. This is 219 to 20. So this is the one you proposed last year, right? 1920. 1920. Nice. 1920 school. Last year? Yeah, it was last year. Last year. This is the one you got voted down. But I don't see much difference in the one that you got here posted. We didn't vote it down. The commission did. Oh, okay. But it did say on funding. But I'm saying this one I have in my book here, the 16 doesn't look any different from this one. That's the first page. So it, that one. It's a, we got an email right here. I know. My I'll computer is, I don't have Excel, and that's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this one drives me nuts. Oh, oh, this closes. 
So I did one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 One that had the your new with numbers are in here. I just got to find it. Nothing's been. I'm not ready. The only thing that changed was the cross country slope. But what I'm saying is this number looks the same. It's 16. Oh, yeah, I'll show you. Okay. The new policy is 6.40 through 6.71. Mr. Chairman, you see that? You see that policy there? Um, Review it to review in May, and there you go. You got the last half of that section on students. You see the financial reports in there, and your IXL reports are in there too. Hopefully, that was your comment. Well, I will tell you again, I've already said, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I've got to say this. The metal roof at Woodbury Grammar, that is, that is speedily moving, moving along. The additional $145,000, I'll give you the exact figure from that email. I'll email that to you. So that is good news for our metal roof project that needs to be done. And then Gregor's working on the specs right now. That's good. I don't have any comments. Oh, thanks, Jamie. <laughs> We love it. It's going to be a board meeting, but I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're done. Uh, nurses, nurses day. On. School nurses day is tomorrow. So if you can, can you say something to our school nurses. Oh, my God. Thank you for coming. That was Marty. Okay. Yes, sir. These look pretty. Yeah, they do. Right, so it's out. Mm -hmm. so, Mr. Coker has not been teaching, but we just left it in there because he is tall. It's a lot. So 5.30, you said there's one? 5.30 for the reception. Okay. It's just going to be, we'll, we'll have the soft drink, whatever the okay, so whatever we're getting. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting right. cupcakes and stuff. We're just kind of. Individual all, all of them. Oh, French I mean, yeah, see how much they were increasing from what it's been in the past. Yeah, so yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah,